Good evening, my name is Richard. This is over and over and over again. This is match review live. We are going to look back on yesterday's game against Aston Villa and we're going to dissect um, what went wrong. And we're also going to obviously look at where it leaves a title race and also, of course, a big game now, a really big game on Wednesday night away in Germany, of course, in the quarterfinal second leg of the Champions League. So lots and lots to get through. So let's get cracking. It's all going to be coming up the other side of this. And a long overdue return to the channel is, of course, Neil. How are you doing today, my friend? I'm um, good, thank you. How are you? Well, you know, I've had better kind of days, <laughs> yeah, I suppose. But um, anyway, you know, it is, it is what it is, isn't it? Unfortunately, we're used to it now, aren't we? After all this amount of time, Arsenal kind of trying their best to spoil your weekend and spoil your life. But, um, you know, we, we cope and get on with it, don't we? Um, obviously, we can only really start in one place yesterday's game and things started so well didn't they when the Liverpool I mean I didn't watch the Liverpool game I've made a decision and I've done it for a while actually just that I'm not going to watch our kind of rivals play because it's just too stressful and I can't be bothered I'd rather focus on something else and just check the result at the end and see what the result is and I did that obviously it so turned out there was injury time going on it was 1-0 to Palace and of course that's how it finished and it was like okay brilliant what a big opportunity this is now for Arsenal to you know, knock it down from maybe three a three horse race to a two horse race. That was my feeling. Um, but then after a couple of minutes, my brain started to think, actually, has that not put a bit more pressure on us now? Because of the opportunity suddenly to become even bigger. Yes, if Liverpool had won, it would have we'd still had to win the game regardless, whether Liverpool won or lost. But was it then I was thinking, is there now maybe a little bit more pressure on us to win? Because of the the massive opening that suddenly appeared in that title race, you know, just to be with us and Man City going into the last few games. And um I don't know, was that a factor? We started the game quite well, didn't we? But it kind of gradually, gradually went away from us, didn't it? What what do you think the main reason was for that? Because we did start the game as we did against Bayern Munich, pretty well. Gosh, um, Richard, it's it's a hard one. I mean, I I, I was at the game and uh, everyone was hopeful following, as you said, the Liverpool. I, I managed to actually see the end of that game because we met a few people in the pub and they had it on. And so can you imagine the atmosphere was already buoyant, it was yeah. electric. Every miss that they made, Salah had a couple of opportunities right at the death. And the, mm. the whole pub was going absolutely back crazy, basically. It was It was mental. It's almost as if we'd won the league. That's how much they were celebrating. And I said, I turned around a couple of people and I said, listen, don't over-celebrate because we've still got a whole serve. We've broken serve, mm -hmm. but we've got a whole serve and Villa ain't no mugs. And I thought, yeah. you know, I'm not going to get too carried away. Yes, I'm happy because it's given us the opportunity to break away a little bit. But mm -hmm. we haven't done our side yet. It's still another 90 minutes of football to play. And um, I, I felt that I didn't feel anything that this is going to cause extra pressure. But I just didn't want to get over. What well, do you want to carry away with it? That's all. Um, it was lovely, as yeah. I said, to get the get have that you know Palace do us a favour. But I didn't want to get over. So I didn't. I kind of went in in it with like just ever hopeful as I am, and I just felt um, we we are right. I think the first half we had we created opportunities, but we just didn't. Mm. We just couldn't finish them. I mean, Jesus had that one where he should have cut the ball back, and yet he tries to head it into the you know you know for directly and hits the side netting. Uh, there were so many. Saka had a couple of opportunities. I think Havertz was put through on one occasion and he just, you know, straight to the keeper. It's those kind of opportunities when you got, when we are now dealing with such fine margins, Richard, 
such fine margins, especially with the calibre of Liverpool and Man Manchester City. It's not often we're going to get opportunities like this. And when we get them, we have to take them. You know, we would have been too clear of Liverpool, I think a oh, point clear of City. And even then, the goal difference wouldn't have made any difference. It all wouldn't have come into effect if then we went and carried on one our six games. So the, the title was in our hands, effectively. And, hmm. you know, Aston Villa are playing for a Champions League spot. So they're not going to be an easy team. Unai has obviously been with us anyway. And I think, to be fair to them, they were very clever. They probably saw where they may have been giving us opportunities in the first half. They completely sorted that out in the second half. I was sitting on the end where we should have seen loads of gold mouth action on our side. And literally, for most of the game, Richard, I was looking at an empty half of the pitch because all the action was yeah. at our gold mouth. And I don't it know was. what it was with our players, whether they were... Hung I mean, I'm not using this as an excuse because end of the day, if you're playing, if you want to be the best, you have to be competing in all the big competitions. So I'm not mm -hmm. going to say that it's a Champions League hangover. Yes, that was a very tricky game. I think the players put a lot into that. But at the end of the day, they're professional. They're very, very fit. They're athletes. They're at the top of their game. And they should be able to cope, have a coping mechanism with being able to then, you know, three, four days later, being able to get in the right we go again. How have Man City won a treble? How have other teams in the past, you know, succeeded winning mm. doubles? I like even like us, we've done a couple of doubles, you know, three doubles in total. So I, I'm not using that as an excuse, but I just felt that the second half, especially, we were so pedestrian, Rich. It was like watching them in slow motion. Mm. And it felt yeah. like they were just waiting for the full time whistle. It was like they were happy to get a point. I couldn't believe it. And you know what? It was coming. They hit the post woodwork twice, I think. And it was only yeah. only a matter of time. And it wasn't, although it was it utterly disappointing and gut wrenching. I wasn't surprised at the end because we were giving nothing in the second half, nothing at all. No, I mean, funny how you say that. I mean, I, I, I mean, you know what my feelings have been generally on on Mikel Arteta for quite a long time, and I've been more surprised. I was more surprised at the way we played against Brighton last week than I was what happened yesterday. I've almost been expecting yesterday to happen for a few games actually, and we've kind of muddled through against Brentford at home a little bit. Luton at home wasn't fantastic. Um, obviously, Brighton was a good performance. There's no question about that. That was a really good away performance. And I thought, oh, well, you know, maybe it's not going to happen this year. <laughs> and then we get yesterday. Now, I think the team lineup was quite a surprise, wasn't it? Because, you know, playing, moving Havertz to that midfield position, which didn't really work before. Zinchenko at left back. We know what problems that's caused us in so many games. And for a game of this importance... I mean, I'm all, I'm all in favour of squad rotation. I think you need to use your squad and, and, you know, rest players here and there. Of course you do. You can't use the same 11 players. But when it's such a game, that, uh, such an important game, to make a team selection that hasn't previously worked particularly well in a game like that, th this is the one game when I'd have said, stick with the, the team that's been doing well in the Premier League. Stick to that team because it's working. Don't make us don't make unnecessary changes for this game. Yes, it's in between the two Bayern Munich games, and that's a, that's a problem. But you know, this was the one game where one of our hardest games we've got left. At, certainly at home, it just seemed. I don't know. I looked at the team sheet at the beginning, and I'm thinking, what's what's he doing? I mean, did you feel the same, or was you fairly confident that that starting lineup would be good enough? No, I was not. The, I was exactly the same as you, Rich. That that baffled me. I mean, end of the day, we know how unsuccessful we've been playing Zinchenko at starting the game, how unsuccessful mm. Havertz has been in the eight. What the mm. hell was he doing? And I'm sorry, just because Jesus and Trossard came on and they saved us at Bayern, mm. it doesn't mean they get an automatic matic start. He should have done the same no. thing. If things weren't working well, he could have brought them both on as subs. You know, exactly. we should have we should have stuck with Havertz in the yeah. middle as a nine and gone with the mm. gone literally with the same team that we started with Bayern. I I, I do not understand what his thinking was, and Zinchenko was responsible for. So he make he, he's not just making the fans nervous. I think he unnerves the rest of the defense. We've got a damn good defense, Rich, but when he's in mm. it, I think they have to. The, I don't think they are. I'm not saying they don't trust him because I'm sure they've got a good camaraderie between them. But I just think mm. that they he he unsettles the back, the other three defenders, and I, and I just feel when if it's even I know Kiwi will struggled a little bit against Bayern. But maybe he was just overwhelmed by it all. We don't. He's still a very young lad. He's he's, he's relatively inexperienced. But then we had Tommy Asu. We had an option with Tommy Asu as well. But yet, no, he throws Zinchenko in there. And look, there was there was. I, I did. You know, I said to you before when you asked me to come on. I said, look, I haven't watched any highlights. But I decided to watch a short clip from Sky or the Arsenal website. I can't remember what it was. 
and he was responsible for two or three errors. One, one mm. which almost led to another one where he literally turned his back on the ball. Gabriel Oka, okay, it was a bit of a sloppy pass from him, but it hits the back of him because he doesn't even know where yeah. the blooming ball is. And that's yeah. it. And yeah. then they, and I think yeah. that, that hit the woodwork, didn't it? That, that yeah, yeah, that's right. You know, yeah. And, yeah. And, and it's like, uh, why did you start with Zinni? And you're right, Richard, it's such a pivotal game, especially when he knew the results of earlier. I'm sure he could have thought, you know what? I'm not taking this mm. risk. Havertz has worked at the nine. I know Terry loves Harrods, Havertz in the chat here. <laughs> but look, to be fair, he has worked at the nine. He's been much better playing in the nine. Yeah. And yes. if you look at if you have a if you look at the statistics with Sinchenko and Havertz in the team, starting Sinchenko and Havertz playing at the eight, they're nowhere near as good no. as when no. we've played a different system. I didn't understand that for a second. Okay. You start that way, and if it doesn't work out, then you can make some changes. Maybe then you bring Sinchenko on. Then you might bring Trossard and Jesus on. It exactly. didn't make any sense to me, Richard, at all. And that, I think that was part. I think Arteta is has a lot to blame for this result. A lot. What, what I what I thought was um, his naivety has come through again yesterday because what happened was the the Bayern Munich game. Um, obviously, Kirill struggled in that first half. There's no doubt about that. You know, he was up against a very, very good player, let's not forget. You know, um, someone who's, you know, pacey, tricky, uh, direct, caused him a lot of problems. So, at half-time, Mikel Arteta took him off. And I wasn't totally surprised, to be fair. And I, I was worried that it was Zinchenko that came on and not Tommy Asu. But Zinchenko actually played quite well in that second half against Bayern, I thought. He did okay, didn't he? I mean, he, he wasn't great, but for him, he did well. I was really nervous when he came on and he actually did all right. And of course, as we know, as you said, Jesus and Trossard came on and those two combined for the equalising goal. And it was almost like Mikel Arteta thought, oh, well, they, they did well in the second half, so I'm going to start them. Without thinking about the actual game itself, the fact that we're playing Aston Villa, it's a totally different game. And then suddenly he's got rid of all his options from the bench to to, to change a game by starting them when that hasn't worked previously. Have I agree. Havertz has been OK at number nine. Well, sort of false nine, whatever you want to call it. He's been OK there. He's, his, his form has got better and better. He's had much more impact since he's been playing in that position. So to take him out of that and play him in a position that before wasn't working. And I think a lot of a lot of our fans, you know, Terry, I know, as you've said, doesn't rate Kai Havertz. And I think a lot of that was to do with where he was playing earlier in the season that wasn't working. And then he got put in a position that did work a bit better. And you're thinking, OK, fantastic. If you're going to play him, play him there or don't play him at all. And in the end, I, t I say, for me, it was naive from the manager yesterday to, it's almost like, well, you know, he wanted to try to get Jesus in the team, Zinchenko in the team. He wanted to try and get Havertz in the team, Trossard in it. You can't get them all in the team. You just can't do it. It doesn't work. You've got to put the players in a position where they're going to be the strongest for the team, not just to squeeze other players in. And that seemed like what he was doing. Sure, the better off, if you're going to play Jesus, play him on the left, maybe. Have it through the middle where he's played. That's We played that in a few games. Uh, but to do what he did, I, I, you know, I looked at the starting lineup and I was shocked. And then we started the game quite well. And you thought, OK, fair enough. You know, it's, it's working at the moment. We're playing OK. Um, we had, Like you said, we had a few chances, didn't we? Um, Kai Abbott's missed a couple and, I mean, obviously the big one from uh, Trossard when, you know, from two yards out, he's got to stick that in the net. I, I don't care what everyone said about a great save from, from Martinez. You hit it straight at him. It, you know what I mean? He's, he's got his two yards out. You've just got to smash that in the, in either corner than that and it's a goal. And he put it straight to the keeper. And yes, it, you know, it was a decent enough reaction with his leg to save it, but he shouldn't be given that op opportunity to save it. It was a really, really poor miss that. And of course, it came seconds after that, just hit the post as well from that incident that you mentioned with Zinchenko. And I mean, Zinchenko for me, I just cannot stand him. I cannot stand him. I can't stand his demeanour on the pitch. I can't stand the way he plays. I mean, there was a clip yesterday of the goal, the first goal, and Zinchenko, for some reason, was over in the right-back position. He didn't make any effort to get back into his proper position. And wh where did the goal come from? Leon Bailey, the player that he's supposed to be marking, has got the freedom of the penalty area to slot into the goal. And, you know, OK, people can say Declan Rice maybe didn't wasn't aware enough. He was on his back foot and he couldn't, you know, he wasn't in the right body position to make a blocking. But, you know... It's not his position. It's not his man he should have been marking. It was Zinchenko's. And where was he? No one could see him because he was over the other side of the penalty area, doing nothing at all other than not, not doing his job. And the fact that what actually tipped me over the edge yesterday was 88th minute. Um, obviously, Watkins goes on and scores a second goal. And at that point, he takes Zinchenko off. 
and brings Eddie and Ketia on. It's like, I'll, I, right away there again, to me, that was a sackable offence on the spot. The fact that he left, he let Zinchenko on for 90 minutes, pretty much, when he'd literally made a mistake every single time he got the ball. And even when he didn't have the ball, he was making mistakes. Um, and then to take him off straight after the second goal goes in, it's like, honestly, mate, what are you doing? If you took him off at 10 minutes, so when he brought Tommy Asu on, I was convinced it was Zinchenko going off. I was saying, it's Zinchenko's going off. Tommy Asu's coming on. Great, great substitution. And what did he do? He took, he took Ben White off. Yeah, so maybe Ben White had an injury. We're not sure yet. It may have been. But even so, it's like, come on, mate. How on earth is Zinchenko? You've got Kirio on the bench. Do something. Get him off the pitch. And it was too late by the time he did it. We were 2-0 down. And he's got, oh, yeah, let's throw Eddie and Ketty on. And suddenly we had about eight players playing up front. We had no midfield. And it's like, you know, yeah, you're 2-0 down. Just give up then. I mean, it was ridiculous, wasn't it? That, that last five or ten minutes of that game, it was almost like watching a Sunday league team. No plan, no structure. It was just, just get everyone on the pitch. And just, I don't know what we were doing. Yes, at 2-0 down with, what, eight minutes of stoppage time left. Probably not going to get anything from it. But look at last season, the Southampton game. We scored twice in stoppage time to get a draw. Who knows? If we're stuck with a plan, you never know. And he just lost the plot. I'll say her again, when the pressure's on, we're not losing. It's not going his way. He doesn't know what to do, does he, to change it. He doesn't know how to put things right. When we're winning games, 5 6 nil, brilliant. He's fantastic. But as soon as things go wrong, he was he's more he's re, he's reactionary rather than proactive, isn't he? And he doesn't know how to, he can't see things coming that we all see. Yesterday, we could see what was happening. It was Villa were going to win that game more than we were in that second half. They were all over us, really. And they played Thursday night. What excuse have we had? I we know. played Tuesday. Yeah, we were at home. Right. I mean, I mean they, they, you're right. They, they... I thought Arteta was definitely the problem yesterday. The biggest mm. problem was Arteta and his absolute naivety and stubbornness, maybe even, not to make changes early enough to try and win the game. You know, he put Jorginho on at nil-nil. I mean, what are you doing? <laughs> you know what I mean? Ridiculous. I, I just, yeah, I don't I, know. I can't yeah, I'm, I'm, I, I, you know, they, they, they were clearly hungry as well, despite all the fallacies yeah. of what Arteta and his game management was. But they were so hungry. They were first to all the second balls. They were. Go- That's the other thing I noticed. And someone in the crowd mentioned it as well. And I thought, you're actually spot on here. They were, the f- they were going in for the tackles as well. We seem to be shying away from mm. them. And that was really uncharacteristic of us. And it's like, hang on a minute, are these boys more keen on the Champions League? Because it shouldn't be that way. And to be to be honest, look, from my point of view, I'd love to win both. Of course, all every fan would. But priority for me, actually, if you gave me a cho- choice, I would say Prem all day long. But ha- actually, Richard, I'd even go one further and say every great game is a priority. Every single game. You, d- you don't... Yeah. You don't throw your eggs in one basket or you give precedence to one game over another every single game's priority because because if not for yourselves you've got thousands of fans paying good money to come and watch you mate you know what i mean so don't don't Mm -hmm. don't, and i'm not saying suggesting for a second that's what it was but it felt like that it felt that we were just we'd almost given up in the whole second half richard that nothing was working so the players were like well what's the point and you're right I know it was late, the second goal, but you never know. You get one ball goal back quickly. Mm. You know, the, the, it panics the opposition, doesn't it? And they might then yeah. make another mistake, which you can get, capitalise on. But if you put on players like that, nothing's going to happen anyway. We might as well have not even come out in the second half. That, that's how I feel. That's how I saw it as a fan at the stadium. Yeah. And, you know, the defending, you know, for that goal where, uh, what was it, was it Leon Bailey? He was completely free. How how could not one of yeah. our players have known that he's there? Someone should have closed him down. It was sloppy defending, Richard. It was so it was, so yeah. sloppy, and I I don't know what I don't know what words to use. I mean, it's so gut wrenchingly disappointing. I, I I'm I'm struggling to understand any of it. Yesterday, if if Villa had outplayed us and played brilliantly, but we had also put up a, a contest for them and we still lost, fair play, mate, fair play. I'd say, do you know what? We played good, as good as we could have, given, you know, all the circumstances. And maybe, as you said, the undue, a little bit of undue pressure with Liverpool losing. But we really gave it a good shot. We were a bit unlucky. It could have gone either way. But Villa deserved it. But we just almost, all right, Villa played a good game. But we capitulated somewhat ridiculously, as far as I'm concerned. And that's not good enough. You know, we, we can't allow that to happen going forward. Look, the way I see it, Richard, if you're going to ask me very quickly... It's two points, which isn't the end of the world. But the way City are, they're like machines. They've done it time and time again. The odds are for them to now drop points is going to be is looking very, very rare. It's possible. You know, Tottenham always seem to give them a bit of a challenge. 
I think they've still got Wolves, which sometimes they've slipped up against Wolves. But it's we're, we're clutching the straws now, aren't we? And it's not just met them. We've also got Liverpool as well. Now, Liverpool would have been so disappointed with their loss. And all of a sudden, mm. they're thinking, right, that's it. We're done. And then they watch that with us. And they're thinking, actually, mm. do you know what? We ain't giving up yet. So we put no. it on two sides. And I think that's the most frustrating part, that we really could have taken the ball by the horns and we failed to do so. Um, I don't know what yeah. else to say, to be honest. I mean, uh, to, to be honest, right, we know that Man City are what they are. They're an unbelievable team, right? And However they've gone about building that team is, is a different matter completely. But they are an unbelievable team. They've got a, a fantastic manager, right? And that's those two things are facts. I and mean, you can't d dismiss them. But there's been great managers and great teams before that have won a lot of trophies. Alex Ferguson, for example, at Manchester United. And it wasn't like everybody was just like, oh, well, let's not bother them. We're never going to win it. So let's just not bother to try. We won the double the season. Was it after they won the treble or something, didn't we? Do you know what I mean? So you can't just give up and think, well, look at the opposition that we've got. And ultimately, the last two seasons, we have been at this point in the season, we have been ahead of Man City. It's been in our hands. And that's regardless of how good Man City are. You can say, well, Man City are going to win their last six or seven games. So what? We win our last six and seven games. We win the league anyway. It's in our hands. We could have, that last season, We, you know, we should be beating Southampton at home. Absolutely no question. Brighton, we lost to home. We should be beating them, right? We dropped our own points. That's nothing to do with Man City being good or not being good. That's to do with our mentality in those big games when the pressure, we know Man City are going to win. That adds to the pressure. Of course it does. And if we can't deal with that, we've got to look at why. This will be, for me, the third season in a row now where we've had something, our target, We've, it's been in our hands. The top four two seasons ago when we blew it at the end. The league title last season when we blew it at the end. And the league title this season. And yes, it hasn't. it's not over yet, but it looks as though we're heading that way again. And no matter what progress we may have made under our tower, and I look at it and think, well, we've made progress from the um, kind of mess that he got us into with two eighth place finishes. We've made a load of progress since then, but that was his fault in the first place for me. And he's, he's improved us. Of course he has. But is he now, after three seasons of the same thing, it's no different to me to those years under Wenger where we challenged for the title. We were top of the league in February and March. We are in the quarterfinals of the Champions League and then we, in the FA Cup and we lost everything in the space of probably two or three weeks. We did it every season pretty much and it wasn't good enough. We finished in the top four, but from a fan's perspective, it wasn't good enough, right? That wasn't acceptable for us. And yet suddenly now, it's acceptable now because Mikel Arteta's got lovely hair. Do you know what I mean? It's ridiculous. It's absolutely ridiculous. Where's the standards gone? Why are we accepting this? You know, and yes, we could still win two trophies this season. Let's be honest. We're, we're two points off the top of the Premier League. We're in a quarter final. We're not going to win either of them. Let's be let's be honest. Let's be honest here. We are not going to win either of them because we don't have the mentality to do it. We saw that yesterday. We saw it against Bayern Munich. You know that the we started game the, those two games well, and we we drifted away. We we couldn't grab the initiative when we had it in our favour. We couldn't grab the initiative last season in the league. Looks like we're not going to be able to do it this year because now I think we have blown it because I think Man City will win all their games. And even if we do, it'll be too late um, when we had it in our in our hands yesterday. So I don't know. I'm I'm starting to think now that um, unless we get a manager that can actually understand what it takes to win and don't believe all of this about, well, you know, he's needed time, he's needed money, he's needed this, that and the other. Look at Xavi Alonso, his first management role. And he's won the league in 18 months against the Bayern Munich team that won it nine seasons in a row. That's a team, that, that's a league champion that can't be knocked off their perch. They've won it so many times. Man City have won it three times, that's all, not nine in a row. Of course they can be knocked off the top. Of course they can with the right manager, the right mentality, the right group of players. And Xabi Alonso has just proved it for by a labour cruising in Germany. He's just shown you don't need five years. You don't need 700 million. You just need the right ideas and the right mindset, the right mentality. And you need to buy the right players. And it can be done. And it can be done. I'm not saying it's easy. It's not easy. But it can be done. And if people say it's the Bundesliga, it's not the Premier League, it doesn't matter. Bayern Munich have won that league nine years in a row. Nine years in a row. And Bayern Munich, we saw the problems they caused us the other night. We're going to get some more problems probably on Wednesday. Um, so they're not an easy opponent to overturn in a league title race. And they've done it. And he's done it in 18 months. They were second bottom of the league when he took over. And in 2022, that was. And people are still making excuses for Arteta. Oh, he still needs time. How, how can we expect to beat Man City over 38 games? How can we expect to do it? Well, what's the point then? What's the point of starting a season if you don't think you can beat them? There's no point in starting. Well, let's just finish second then, because second's all right, because Pep's Man City are, are too good. 
you think Alex Ferguson, when we were un unbeaten that season, did he go away and think they're too good? No, he thought, right, sod this. I'm going to make us better. I'm going to make us better than them. And in the end, it was actually Jose Mourinho who came in and, and overtook us in the end. It wasn't Alex Ferguson straight away, was it? But somebody came in and thought, you know what? I'm not, I, I'm not, I'm not accepting that, that, that they, they can't be beaten. And that's got to be the mindset. That's the mindset we've got to have as fans of this great club. We've got to not accept that Man City cannot be beaten over a 38 game season because they can. They can. If Bayern Munich can be picked for a league title in Germany, if Barcelona, all those league titles they won in a row in, in Spain, do you know what I mean? It can be done. No, no team is invincible. No team wins forever. And we've got to believe, every single one of us has got to believe we can do it. No excuse, oh, well, it's Man City. It doesn't matter. Under Fergie, Man United were great, won loads of trophies. We still had success. We still won league titles. We went unbeaten. We won doubles. Do you know what I mean? Why but can't we, we have but that we, we could have done it last season without beating them. Yeah. We could have we lost them yeah. twice and still won. We were still yeah. we had enough points. They couldn't yeah. even have caught us if we didn't lose the stupid games. And and yeah. that, that brings me to a good point. Um, Jack on the purely uh, said he put a little voice note on the WhatsApp. And and do you know what? I didn't even know about this, but it's so true. He said exactly this time last year he played Zinchenko for 90, 87 minutes against Liverpool when we drew. I think that was the one where we were two nil up and then we drew and dropped two points. And he said he's done exactly the same thing again yesterday, yesterday or whenever it was now. I forgot, I've lost track of time. But he's done exactly the same thing against Villa. And it's like, mm. he says, hang on a minute. He goes, so what's the definition of insanity? You know, it's it, it doesn't make mm. sense. The Zinni thing did not make sense. I'm sorry, I'm just like tracking. But I agree with you, no. Rich. They're not unbeatable. They're not, you know, as I said, and as you know, we could have beat them last season without even having to, we could, by lose. In fact, the weird thing is, this season we've taken four points off them. Last mm. season we didn't get any points off them, but we actually could have won the league last season. It's yeah. just it's it is down to what we do on the pitch. I, I I'm not gonna uh, it's, you know say anything against you on that. I, I completely agree. It's all down to us. As is the fact that no, even I'm not gonna say that. Oh, Arteta needs more time. He's had the time. He should be well mm. bedded in by now to be able to do it. And look, it's not over yet. I know I know um, what you're saying. It is very very difficult for us now. Hugely so. Yeah. Only from the mentality point of view, I agree, because we saw them just fold yesterday. Unless the only the way the only way I think I will pick myself up again is if by some miracle, um, Rich, we do manage to get a result against Bayern and then we win our very next game. If we can get two back to back wins, maybe that might put something back into the players to give them that impetus again. Look, we've had a real bad knock, and straight away immediately we picked ourselves up. If we lose to Bayern then I think we're going to be really struggling because then that's it. We've only got the Prem left. And I think, I don't know if the, the lads are going to be able to pick themselves up. But if we can get a result, that's why this game is now doubly important than what it was, I think, before. Because then that might still give us a chance. All I want, Rich, I'll tell you something, right? Yeah, the odds are City are going to win it now. All I want is to not let them have it before the last game of the season. We, sh we have done enough to be able to make them go all the way to the last game of the season. That is, I'll be so disappointed. I'll be disappointed anyway if we lose it. But if we mm. if we capitulate and let them have it with three games to spare, or Liverpool with three games to spare, I'm going to be seething. I want them to at least fight now and take it to the last game of the season. That's all I want now. That's all, Well, there's not much else we can expect, is there? But that's what I want. Yeah, I mean, that's, obviously that's what we have to do. Um, but I don't know, from what I've seen in the game against Bayern Munich, what I saw obviously yesterday, especially that second half, you know, we're more likely to lose our next two games than win the next two games, if I'm honest. That's what it looked like. But football's a strange game, isn't it? Sometimes, you know, strange things happen. And it is small margins in all of these games. It's not like even yesterday, yes, Villa dominated that second half, deserved to win. But it was small margin. I say Trossard scores that one in the first half. We win that game, potentially. Um, you would say 1-0 up changes the whole game completely. So it is small margins and it is small margins at the top of the league, isn't it? Two points realistically isn't a great deal, you know, with six games to play. And yes, however good Man City are, I don't, I didn't expect, I never expect Man City to drop points in any game. You know, I would never expect them to. If they do, it's a massive bonus because whatever part of the season it is, if they lose a game, you think, well, that's a bonus because that's three points that they've lost and they don't lose too many, do they? So, but, Yes, in the run into the season, I don't expect them to lose. I don't expect them to, to drop any points. Looking at their fixtures as well, you're thinking, I mean, Spurs aren't going to do us any favours, are they? Last 
their last second, second last game of the season. They're not going to. They're not going to. I'm not saying unless, they won't unless they're fighting for fourth. Unless they're fighting for fourth, they might do. We, we don't know. Let's see. Let's see. Yeah, I, I, I guess so. And uh, you know, but there's nothing. I mean, we've got to play Spurs as well away. So let's. I know. You know, I know. We we we, we, know, we need to worry about that ourselves, don't we? Because if there's one team that are going to want to end our title dreams completely, it's going to be them, especially after the fact that we won it there on their ground before a couple of times. So they are going to, you know, however, and I always look at this, you know, I've seen Arsenal fans laughing at how bad Spurs have been, some of their terrible defeats they've had, you know, obviously at the weekend, they lost 3-0 against Fulham or whatever it was, and all these bad defeats they've had, but you can guarantee it, when they play ours, they're not going to be that bad at all. That's going to be their cup final. They are going to give everything in that game because they are going to want to beat us and knock us completely up out of it completely, aren't they? So I don't care how they've played in all the other games. It's irrelevant. What the only game that matters for Tottenham is that game against us now. Yes, that, like you said, they're battling for the top four. They, they're not going to necessarily throw games against Man City. But if they beat us, it won't matter anyway, will it? Let's be honest. They, they might as well go and beat Man City if all the good it's going to do us. <laughs> do you know what I mean? So it's... But I don't know. I, I, just, I just sense now, and I, I've kind of... In the back of my mind, even when we were winning five and six nil a few weeks ago and we were wiping the floor with teams and we were just out playing everybody, I still had these doubts in the back of my mind. When the pressure's on, what are we, how are we going to be able to cope? Is it going to be any different? Like you said there, it's the same thing, isn't it, from last season? It doesn't seem to have learned, not just last season, the season before, the season before that. It's like, what is he, what is he learning as he's going along? I don't think he's really learning anything. He's just, he's just got this belief. That his way is going to work, and he doesn't. Got to, he's not going to move away from that. He's not going to look at it. Didn't work last season. I mean, you, we saw yesterday with the team selection. That team selection didn't work in December. So, what makes anybody think it's going to work in April when there's more pressure? Other, you know, but yet he believed it would. Or he wouldn't have picked the team. So that kind of shows me his mindset. And I think to get us over the line for us to be able to go on to the next level and whatever improvements that we've made, and I'm not denying we haven't, we're not better now than we were three years ago. Of course we are, you know, we, we're a much better team. Um, but to me, we've almost plateaued now. Last season and this season, in fact, at this point last season, we had more points, more goals we'd scored. Um, we'd lost less games. We were top of the table with six games to play. Um, so we haven't really progressed. We've maybe stayed the same. And when you're battling against teams like Liverpool have improved massively this season from last season. Man City, actually, funny enough, Man City have got more points at this point last se this season than last season. Um, and everyone said this season they wasn't as good. And yet they've at this point, they've got they had 71 points after 32 games. This season they've got 73. So they've actually done better. They've scored more goals than last season. In fact, they've scored more goals than us this season now. All, all them six nil wins we had, and they've still scored more goals than us <laughs> after 32 games. You know, so um, but it's not about Man City, it's about us. And it's about, and like you said, if we if we now go on and win all our all our last six games and Man City still win the league by two points because they win all theirs. I, I would be, I would say, fair enough. We've coped with that pressure, and we've done. Oh, yes, it will be even more frustrating this this game, the game against Fulham, the game against West Ham at home when we hit a, like fifty chances and couldn't score. But ultimately, that's all we can do now. But I I don't believe this team's got it in them. I don't believe this manager's. I think his mentality isn't there for this kind of pressure situation. I don't believe it is, and. If we're going to come second or we're going to come third, now I'm not overly bothered. If if we're going to if we lose to Wolves, so for example, and and if you know we then got Chelsea to come after that, then we've got Tottenham. You know these are these are difficult games. We could, we could come out of them games. We could be third, right? And the season's just going to fizzle out. And beating Bayern Munich obviously will be great, but it only means a semi final, and we'll be playing Real Madrid or Man City over two legs. We get knocked out of the semi-final. We come third in the league. Is it? It's still a disappointing season, isn't it? Or, or would that? Or would you look on that no. as progress? No, it's not. It's still disappointing for me. Um, as no. much as I'm positive, but as much as I'm positive uh, all the time, I that would be that would be disappointing. You know, I I, I think by be. now we should we 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 have what was the last time we won a trophy? Twenty twenty was it? We won the FA Cup. Um, mm. And I know it probably doesn't seem a long time. And though I'm not a trophy hunter for people watching or listening, thinking he's, I'm not. No. I've never been a trophy hunter. I, I, I want, I want every like every other fan. I want the best for the club. And that sometimes does mean that now and again you do have to win a big trophy simply because it, if nothing else, 
if you've got a, good, a squad of young players which look half decent, then it gets gives them the encouragement and motivation to stay. You see that you see the, the big players or the you know the players that are of quality that we have got. If we don't start getting something our hands on a trophy at the, to show you know to 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 merit their good work for for example for the whole entire season, they're going to get to the point where do you know what I think we could do better elsewhere. We might have success from elsewhere, and then if we start losing players, then we're back to square one again. So, you know, it's all about trying to build um, a team or a community which can stick together because they can sense and smell that success is there. It's there. We're gonna, we're gonna, we're doing, working our way towards it. And I, and I, and I, for me, it is disappointing. The third and the semi-final final is disappointing to me, but it won't be disappointing to the board, and they're not going to get rid of him. They're not going to get rid of him. No, mistakes no. like this. No, Even if not, we get no. knocked out in the quarter, they're going to think, wow, his um, first Champions League's appearance for him as a manager, of course. First time mm -hmm. we bid it for what, six, seven years. And we got straight to the quarterfinals, which, yes, if you look at Pep's record, is actually better than him already. Because I don't think for the first two or three seasons, they even got out of the group stages. They were struggling in the Champions League. I remember that. But we got to look at the bigger picture. And yeah. the bigger picture says that for so many years, we've won a couple of FA Cups. And that's it. And, and as much as I, and you know, my, the FA Cup is my favourite competition. I love and adore it. And I want us to win our 15th one, hopefully next season. But we have to win the, one of those two big trophies. We have to. It's not about glory hunting or trophy hunting. We just have to, to say that we are a big club in Europe. Because ever since we moved into the Emirates, which was the main aim of that move, I still think. Um, otherwise, we should have just stayed at Highbury, which I loved. We should have just stayed there. Yeah. We actually, I feel we we're more successful with the bigger trophies in Ivory Bridge. Yeah, you know, that. We, we, that. we, you know, we've come here to to compete with the big boys, and we have yet to bag one of the big two. So it's got to happen sooner or later. But the thing is, he's not going anywhere. He won't unless he decides yeah. to leave himself. The board are going to be happy with his progress. They are, and that's and that's where um, I will never align with. The direction that the club is 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 going in, because you're right. I, I can't see, I can't see what needs to happen for Mikel Arteta to get sacked. Honestly, I can't see if he hasn't been sacked already for uh, the the two seasons when we were what in fifteenth place at one point. One season I seem to remember fifteenth, sixteenth, wherever it was, two eighth place finishes. He took us out of Europe completely. He bottled the top four at the season two couple of seasons ago. You know, and I can't see what would need to happen for them to sack him. If he's not been sacked already, I, it still almost feels like he's got a job for life until, like you said, until he decides to leave or until Barcelona take him away or somebody comes in for him, please, somebody. But, I mean, um, it's to me, that's when David Dean was um, was basically, you know, running the club. He was basically running the club, wasn't he, David Dean, all those years. He wouldn't have accepted this. He would not have accepted it at all, you know, and. Yes, he, he was one of the, the drivers behind the move. You know, they wanted a bigger stadium. They wanted more fans in. They wanted more money in, obviously. That was one of the things. David Dean's a businessman, ultimately. But he, he, at least he cared about the club. At least he wanted success on the pitch. And he'd do anything to bring that success. And it's no coincidence, is it, that since he left in 2007, we haven't won anything other than an FA Cup a couple of times. And I, I, I sort of agree with you that um, we need to win the Premier League at the Emirates. 100% we, we have to. Right. The Champions League, we've never really won it. So it'd be lovely to win it. But I look more and we have to win the Premier League. But to me, at this moment in time, we have to win something, anything. We need a trophy. The Carabao Cup as a starting point will do. But now I'm not saying this as soon as we win the, the Carabao Cup, that's it. You know, brilliant. Arteta succeeded. No, it's a longer term thing. But even I think was, was Pep's first trophy here, the, the League Cup. I think it was Jose Mourinho's first trophy here was the League Cup. You've got to start somewhere. George Graham's first all, trophy was the League George Cup. Graham. Well, yeah, exactly. Yeah, there you go. So, you know, it's like um, after four years without a trophy, and it looks like it's going to be four years without a trophy now. For his first full, four full seasons as manager, he's won nothing. All that money he spent building it, building his team, and I, I don't believe that that is going to change. And I, I like you, I don't believe it's going to make any difference. They're not going to sack him if we continue to get in the top four, and with the team that we've got, that's got to be the very, very minimum ex expectation now with the with the squad that we've got, the money we've spent. We have to get in the top four every year, and as long as we do that, whether we win a cup or we don't, whether we win the league or we don't, whether we get knocked out of the early stages of the Champions League or we reach the semi-final, 
Doesn't matter. He's 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 got a job or well, well, a bit like Arsene Wenger did. Arsene Wenger had that job, and I know the circumstances were different, and the, the board were different for most of that time, and whatever. But it was a similar thing, wasn't it? While Arsene Wenger kept getting us in the top four through that transitional period, it, nothing else seemed to matter to the club, did it? The fans, it did though. It started to matter to the fans. I'm hoping that at some point, the fan. I mean, we saw it yesterday, didn't we? I've never seen the Emirates empty that quickly in all my life. Never. In, in even in the so-called dark days of Wenger, which weren't really dark days at all, they were finishing fourth. I'm mean, actually finishing fifth. They were the dark days of Wenger, by the way. Winning FA Cups and finishing fifth uh, was was the dark days. But even in the dark days of Wenger, when the fans were totally negative, the ground never emptied like that. Never, I've never seen that before. It was honestly, it was embarrassing. I think there's ten minutes still to play because we've got stoppage time. And yes, we were two 0 down. It was frustrating, but. All the, I see so much on social media. Oh, the real fans in the stadium, they support this team. They support this manager. Well, where were they yesterday? They went home. They didn't. The, the team needed support then. They needed to know. Even if you lose the game, you stay behind and you show the team you appreciate what they're trying to do. That's when they need it the most. When you win 5-0, the players don't need your support. They're on a high. They've just won 5-0. They don't care. It's, it's when they're losing games and they're feeling down. That's when the fans need to lift them. And they, those fans just went home. And to me, I was, in, I was embarrassed to be an Arsenal fan yesterday looking at that stadium in those last 10 minutes. When we've been singing to clubs, we empty stadiums everywhere we go. No, we empty our own bloody stadium because our fans have got no character to stay behind and cheer the team at the end. Not cheer them necessarily, but at least show some sort of appreciation and support that we're still here for you. Yes, it's disappointing you've lost the game. It was it was a terrible performance, but we are still here for you. That's what they need then. And everyone's saying, oh, yeah, the fans in the, in the stadium support. No, they don't. Because where were they? Why weren't they showing that support yesterday? That's really, honestly, I, I've, I've, that is that is embarrassing. I mean, on a TV audience as well to see the ground like that. The Aston Villa fans in the corner going mental because they've just won a big game. Do you know what I mean? And we're not even there. Our fans are just not there. I don't know. I just, I just find that are the fans starting to turn? Are, are the fans starting to think enough is enough of this? Enough is enough of this failure at the end when it matters. Like it wasn't enough when Wenger was there. The fans got sick of it. The majority of fans got sick of it, didn't they? Is yeah, that what it's I, going to take? Do you think that's what it's going to take for this to happen? Playing in front of empty stadiums for the last 10 minutes of games. Is that what's going to make the ball think? Is this time for a change or not? Do you think it's going to make any difference? It's really, really difficult one to, to call because I, I think... Oh, are you still there? I lost you for a minute there. You're still there, Rich? Oh, you're back. Yeah, you're yeah, back. Yeah. You're back. <laughs> okay, okay, yeah. Um, I, I don't know whether it will make much difference, to be honest, because the board... I don't think think the way the fans do. It doesn't. It doesn't seem that way anyway. I think you're right when you talk about mentioned David Dean. He was something different. He was. He was like a fan. He wasn't, he wasn't someone who was. He, was. he, he wasn't. Yeah. He wasn't someone who was in it for the, you know, the, the the glory of being a director or being at the you know big wig at Arsenal Football Club. He was there because he genuinely cared. I'm not sure. I've never liked the Cronkies. All right, Josh has done a bit of PR work, which has smoothed things a little bit, and you know he was. He wasn't too bad in that documentary but he's not going to be an idiot in the documentary is he? it doesn't hurt it doesn't do his pr any favors does it so he's no, obviously going to be not. come across very well in the documentaries but i i don't know if they think or align themselves the way the fans do i really don't so i don't know whether that is the issue i'm not saying look i i i would rather start looking at maybe that side of things when this season is done because i know it's as improbable as it is rich and i know that's how you feel I still think there could still be another twist. Now, whether that twist goes in our favour or Liverpool's favour, I don't know. But I still think there may be one more twist, maybe. If City end up doing the treble two seasons in a row, we might as well give up and go home. There's no point. What's the point of football then? If one team is going to win, the, the treble is one of the hardest things to do. They've already done it once and they're in it again. The same, you know, they're in it again. They're in the semi-final, semi uh, quarter-final, possibly semi-final, and they're top of the tree at the Prem. So can you imagine if they do the treble again? I mean, it's what's the point? You know, you think as hard as we might do it, and you know, we, we, and and it's and as it, as much as our mentality might improve, if you've got one team who's going to do what Rangers were doing and Celtic were doing in the Scottish League, it, it's it's kind of you know it takes a bit something a little bit away from the 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 the, the, how do you, how do you the passion and and the and the and the good feeling that you have for football at times, because you think, yeah, we're playing really well mm -hmm. and the crowd's getting behind us and yeah, we've got great fans. But at the end of the day, City's going to win three trophies. And you're like, mm. OK, that's what it comes down to. I'm not suggesting that's going to happen for a second. All I'm thinking is I would rather make comments on Arteta after this season is done. 
And I think if, yes, we come away with absolutely nothing again, then, yeah, then, then questions have got to be asked. But it's not the point is, Rich, it's not going to happen because the board are not no, seeing it that no. way. It's not. And, I, and, I, and, and you know, full well, we're never going to have a completely empty stadium. It's not going to happen. Even, in, even when the fans were so fractious under Wenger, and we had, we had, I'd never ever seen this in my life as an Arsenal fan. There were segments of the crowd fighting each other. Do you remember that? There were yeah, segments yeah, of yeah. the, I've yeah. never, that's our own fans. We're not fighting the opposition fans. We're yeah. fighting ourselves. And even yeah. then, it still wouldn't have been enough. So I, I can't see that happening, to be honest. I, I, I think, I, I think he's going to be there next season. And I think if nothing happens next season, surely the, then the board will think, He's he's he's, a, he's great. He's never had the experience of a top management position before. He's done as he's taken us as far as we can. As you said, he's probably plateau. You know, he's got to that plateau point where he can't take us that much further. It was a bit like um, it was a manager for uh, Liverpool. Oh Christ, it, Brendan Rodgers. Huh? Brendan Rodgers. Yes, he, he 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 improved them. But I think he just got to the point where that's it, he couldn't do anything couldn't more. Do it, yeah. And yeah. I, I I kind of feel that might be the same with Arteta, possibly. We don't know yet, but possibly. And I think then maybe the board will think, all right, now it might be time to bring in an experienced winner. You see, that's the thing. We need a winner. Even Wenger wasn't read out. He had won a few things in his, you know, leagues that he'd come from, but he wasn't a proven at the really top level. He wasn't a winner. And all right, he was magic and did he did what he did, but we need someone who's a winner. I think who's got the experience, who knows when the chips are down, how to manipulate the team and manage it, and actually outsmart his opposition manager. Sometimes I feel that they're not really looking at the opposition too much and just doing what they think is right. They it's someone who can actually outsmart, you know, game by game and even in game, the in game management. And That's the most important. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. So I don't know. Let, let's see what happens at the end of the season. But he ain't going nowhere, Rich. I, I'm going to say it now. <laughs> no, no, I, I, I agree with you. I agree with you. And this, and you, you, you're you're kind of right in a way as well that um you know we've got. I think now we've got the basis of something really good. You know, the players that we've got, we've got some really talented young players uh, that are still some of them aren't uh, yeah at their peak some of them aren't um some of them are maybe reaching their peak right now and we need to make sure we build around that but we've got the the, the basics are there aren't they the basics are there um and um i'm just not sure if arteta's got the capabilities to go that next step and I, as I said before, it's not really about how good Man City are. That's irrelevant. It's not about that, is it? I mean, let's face it, Man City have had 100-point seasons. You know, this this season and last season, they didn't they didn't get anywhere near that. So it's not like they've been so far ahead of everybody else in the last two seasons. They haven't been. We've been in there and thereabouts, and we, we should have finished them off the two years in a row now. And we, we haven't been able to. So to me, it's not like we can look at that and say, well, look at Man City. Yeah, Man City are consistent. That's what they are. They they consistently get results when they have to. Uh, and they've got, obviously, a great squad of players and a great manager. And I think that's the difference, isn't it? And I said this last season. I said if Pep had managed our team, we would have won the league last season. I think if Pep was managing our team now, we would win the league this season. It's not about the players necessarily. It's about the manager. 100% is the manager. And even if we had Klopp, managing our team you look at you look at the players Liverpool Liverpool have been playing kids in their team a lot of this season because of injuries that they've had and one thing or another and they're still level on points with us imagine if Klopp had our team with no injuries that we've hardly had any serious really like injuries to key players Rice has played nearly all season Saliba's played all season Gabriel's played all season the goalkeeper's played all season you know Ben White's hardly missed the game Saka's missed what two games in, in like four years or something you know what I mean he's not had the coach, last season we had injuries, you know, Saliba was out. We knew that was a big miss, whatever. But this season we haven't had that. And even despite that, despite our strongest group of players available pretty much every single game, he's still not able to, to get it over the line. You know, and that's that's not Man City being mad. Like you said, four points we've took off them. We took four points off Liverpool. And we still can't get above them. We still can't get over the over the finish line ahead of them. So, I, I don't know. There's, there's yeah, that's... More... A... That's a great point. I didn't even think we got four points of Liverpool as well. I didn't even think about that. So the two nearest yeah. rivals, 
We've actually scored yeah. eight points off them, and we're still <laughs> we're still not. But you know what? That's that's the other, that's one thing I did think as well, Rich. I was after leaving the stadium. Oh God, I felt like the, the same numbers that I had when that Europe Europa game last season, where Tommy Asu and Saliba got injured within the space of minutes yeah. of each other, and the numbers yeah. I felt. I wasn't. I didn't care about Martin only missing the penalty and us being knocked out. I was upset that we were in this blooming competition in the first place. That's caused us two <laughs> big injuries. That's probably cost yeah. us the title, which inevitably it was played a big part of it. I'm not saying it was the only reason, but I think it played a part. This, this yesterday, I left thinking I feel even worse because actually we've got a full strength team out there. Exactly, and exactly what you just said. That you, you know we can't complain. It's not what the only injury really now is timber, isn't it? And that's it. And we know and that he's only played one game, season. half a game. He's played half, half a game. Played half a game. He played half a game. Yeah. So it doesn't. It's irrelevant because he's really not being yeah. our player anyway. Um, no. and, and and it just felt that right. Okay, this time. You had quite a num- big number of people to choose from, to man manage, and to dis- and, and to you know set up in a way which would have proven it difficult for Villa, Villa to to have anything from us really. Mm. Do you know they played like the home team yesterday. We played like we were away. We we, we just were yeah. so off the pace. It's untrue. And yeah, I, I felt that way. I think you're absolutely right that actually this season, in terms of our squad, we've got no excuses at all. None. None whatsoever. I don't think so. I, I don't. I don't think we have. No, I don't think we have. And we we, we are technically in a in a worse position than we were last. Because at this point last season, I say we had more points, more goals scored, and we were top of the table. Um, so we're actually in a worse position. We, you know, and that's our own doing because we've got less points than we accumulated at this point last season. And that was despite the fact that we were conceding a lot of goals. We, we've been a lot more solid defensively most part of this season and that's been a, a big bonus and that's been a big improvement but it's still not enough it's not enough because when it you know it's, it doesn't matter that we beat Sheffield United 6-0 and 5-0 it doesn't matter that we won 5-0 away at Burnley the two worst teams in the league we can score goals against them that's not what matters what matters is we're in the big moments in the big games when the pressure's on and we can't score. Yesterday, how many times did the ball go into the box? We had nobody attacking that six-yard box. Nobody. The only time we did was Trossard, and obviously he missed. But that was one time out of probably 10 opportunities where the ball went in the box. And no one's there. No one's anticipating. Ian Wright. Where's the Ian Wright type? He'd have been in that six-yard box. He'd have got a hat-trick yesterday with those balls in that box, wouldn't he? He'd have been sniffing out those chances. You know, we've had goal scorers at Arsenal over the years. Great goal scorers, right? We've been fortunate to see so many of them, right? And that's the one thing you can say that, it, and last summer we knew this, the summer before we knew it, it's not been put right. And here we are in the same position going for it. It's like Groundhog Day, honestly, it's like Groundhog Day. And some people, you know, I used to, it's quite it's quite ironic in a way, because in those kind of latter years of Wenger, maybe the last four or five, six years of Arsenal Wenger, when the crowd were really turning, and like you said, there was, you know, there was fights in the stadium between Arsenal fans, you know, and I was quite... Um, angry with all the people that wanted Wenger out, mainly because of what he had brought us. You know, the, the great football, the great success, the invincibles, doubles here, there and everywhere, Champions League final, the only one we've ever had and all this kind of stuff, right? And I kind of felt a real affection for him and I felt sorry for him and I didn't like the reaction of the fans, yeah. right? And I, I, I wanted to... I, I knew his time was up. I wasn't stupid. I knew we wasn't going to progress, but I felt in the circumstances with the ground and having to sell our best players and all this kind of stuff and, you know... Um, and that used to really upset and anger me, right? And kind of now I've gone the other way because to me, Arteta's achieved nothing to deserve. He's getting that same affection from the fans that people like me had for Wenger because of what Wenger had brought us, what he'd given us, the success he'd brought us, the great teams he'd brought us, the great players he'd brought us. And I think that was understandable. Whereas now people have got this mad affection for Arteta. It's, it's achieved nothing. He's achieved nothing that Wenger, Wenger achieved a million times more than Arteta. And yet the, the, those same fans that are now supporting Arteta when we're doing nothing are the same fans that wanted Wenger out for doing a better job than what Arteta's doing. Now, that's true. I, I don't understand it. I, it just, I can't get my head around it. It's like, how does that even work? If you wanted Wenger out for just finishing top four and being challenging for every trophy until February and March and then falling away at the end, bottling everything every year, but still managing the odd FA Cup, if you wanted Wenger out for that, why are you saying Arteta needs more time? Why are you saying Arteta's the greatest manager? Why are you saying Arteta is the new Pep? Why aren't you feeling the same about him as you did about Arsene Wenger? I don't uh, get it. You know, what? You just remember, I just realised one thing as well. You were talking earlier about um, uh, some managers who don't need any time to bed in. Well, Wenger won the double in his first full season. 
There you go. Didn't he? Exactly. Didn't he? And it was against Man United, who'd won the league the last two or three seasons before. Exactly. And that was against, you know, at the time, Man United were almost like the Liverpool of the 80s. They were were literally unbelievable. And even Ferguson said that. He said, when Wenger came aboard, he then realised that we have to, like you were saying earlier again about the improvement, when you realise that teams are Mm. improving, then you've got to also adapt and adjust to that. Well, Ferguson has come on, he's gone on record, he's he's been interviewed and said, Christ, when Arsenal came, when Wenger and Ars- and his Arsenal were there, we had to change everything. He said it. We had to change everything. We had to go up another five levels to even keep up. Mm. So, and so you know, it's not beyond the realms of impossibility for someone to come in and, and have success very, very quickly. I know it's become, it's such a hard league. It is probably the hardest league in the, in the world. There's no, there's no question about it. It's a difficult, difficult league because you do get those, you know, weekends where, a team where you don't expect anything from suddenly beating one of the big teams. Look, Palace beat Liverpool at Anfield. I mean, it's unheard of normally, isn't it? But they did it. Yeah. Um, yeah. So we, you, it, you can get that. But generally speaking, I, 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 yeah, I think, you know, if you are good and you're competent, you're going to start making progress quite quickly, I feel. As long as you have got the backing from the board, that's the other thing. But he has had, there, you know, we can't, we, we used to say we don't have any money and Wenger had to literally work. Yeah. With yeah. nothing, didn't he? And even then, he still yeah. got top four. Even when we had Shamak and we had Bentner, <laughs> we were getting top four. Come on, Richard. Who, what other managers actually. can achieve that? Yeah. Who, what other managers can achieve that? Yeah. So, yeah, you, of know. course, it's going to be, you're going to have affection for the man. You know, even then, he was still managing to do top four. But, um, I, 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 yeah, it, it's, 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 it's going to be a, a, a waiting game now. We're going to see where we finish up this season, what happens. And then I'll, and then and then we'll take it into next season because we'll be there next season, of course. And then I like then I think I I will be making more noise. I think about it. Then I'm not going. I'm going to stay quiet and a little bit on the fence at the moment because I this season isn't finished yet for me. It's, I'm still hopeful. I'm going to no, be. No, I'm a fan. I have to be, Rich. I'm not. I'm not giving up on the team. We're still se- We're still second by goal difference. We're two points behind, and we're it's still on. We still got a, a game to play in the quarterfinal of the Champions League. It's not over yet for me. I will wait and see what happens at the end of the season and then I'll start making maybe a little bit more noise about it. But I do feel that was a really good point that, you know, people that turned on Wenger, but Wenger had won stuff. He'd done the unthinkable, really, when you think about it. Aside from winning the Champions League and maybe retaining a Prem, is that something we haven't done for, I don't know, how many decades it's been when we've actually won back-to-back titles? Was it the last time in the 30s? I don't yeah, it was, know. Yeah. It was, it was, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah. Yeah, so, yeah. you know, that's another yeah. thing. You know, we, we, we haven't done that. And all right, Wenger didn't do that. And Wenger did. But we got mightily close, mightily close to doing that. Um, if Bergkamp had converted that penalty in that, I think we yeah. would have gone on a one I double do. that season as well. I really do, I do believe yeah. it. I so, do, you know, yeah. it's fine margins again, isn't it? We talk about fine margins. So I, I it's, a, it's a matter of waiting and seeing what happens. And I know... Terry in the chat probably ain't going to like that because I know where he's, his direction is with Arteta and Kai Havertz. But we haven't looked at the chat yet, but we'll see what they've been saying. <laughs> yeah, we'll have a look at the chat because there's been some comments going on as we've been going along. Um, obviously, Terry is with us, of course. He says, Ian, Richard, nothing like working on your week off. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I've been doing a lot of hard jobs today, actually, to try and get things done. Um, but there you go. Uh, we've got um, uh, Sushka says there, is um, Raya now uh, also the problem like Ramsdale was last year? Or keep Arteta defending his keeper. Well, I wouldn't necessarily say Raya's a big problem. Um, certainly not as much of a problem as Ramsdale was last year because he was actually gifting opposition goals right, left and centre at the end of the season, wasn't he? Passing straight to their players and stuff. I don't think Raya's been doing that. Yes, he could have maybe done a little bit better yesterday, but I don't even think either goal was really down to him. It was the defence in front of him that let him down on for both of those goals. And that's been the case. So I wouldn't say that it's a similar problem, no. I think he's an upgrade slightly on Ramsdale, but we saw yesterday the goalkeeper at the other end. He's better than both of them. And he, that's, you know, I know he, he wanted to leave because of different circumstances, but should we not have done what to keep him? Would we still be having a conversation about goalkeeper now? We wouldn't, would we, obviously, because he's one of the best in the Premier League. Um, and, you know, that's that's the choice that we made at that time. I'm not to, I know it wasn't... Um, you know, it wasn't an easy situation and no one should be guaranteed a number one spot. You've got to earn it and work for it. But at the time, maybe he deserved that opportunity because of what he'd done the end of the previous season. He deserved so, a chance, you know. Richard. He was flawless yeah. for the time he was replacing them. He was. Absolutely he flawless. Was, yeah. 
Yeah, he was, and yeah, he did deserve a chance, and he, he can understand why he felt the way he did, and that's fair enough, isn't it? Uh, Terry says our season is over on Wednesday, the seventeenth, uh, twenty-four at twenty-one forty-four. We might go to extra time, Terry, so it might be a bit later than that because it might go to extra time and penalties. Um, who knows? Uh, Terry says uh, I agree with you about rotation. He, he must rotate twenty-nine or thirty-five to another team. Yeah, I kind of agree. Well, certainly thirty-five, twenty-nine. I'm prepared to give him a bit more time, but not thirty-five. I never want to see him. I've, I said this last season. I don't want to see him play for us again. And here he is, still playing. Big games, 89 minutes. I don't believe it. Just get rid of him. He's crap. Um, Terry says, I don't think our centre pairing are as good as we think. Bayern and Villa playing um, good. Um, our centre forwards cause panic. Yeah, no, you're right. And when we're, when we're dominating games... They're not put under much pressure. They haven't been put under much pressure for a lot of this season. And suddenly, the last couple of games, we are put under pressure. We've creaked and cracked and letting goals. So, yeah, maybe, maybe you've got a point now. I'm not sure. Uh, Terry says, for £65 million, I'm sure you can get a better centre-forward than the 29. Arsenal fans just need to accept his crap. I, I, don't, I, don't think he's, I, I don't think he's crap. I, I don't think he's done as well as we hoped he was going to. But I think he had settled into a position in the team recently that was working. It was working for him. It was working for the team. And then I'd say I decided to change it for God knows what reason. And Terry says, well done, Granite Jacker, for leaving Arsenal and winning a league trophy. <laughs> um, he knew he wasn't winning one at Arsenal with Arteta Ronan. So maybe he did. I don't know. But yeah, I mean, fair play to him. No, it's not just him, obviously. It's a, it's a team, isn't it? And, you know, the Bayer Leverkusen have had an amazing season. And he's been a big part of that because he plays every game, as he did for us. So he's, he's an important... I remember people saying, Arsenal never even qualified for the Champions League with Granite Jacker in the team. Arsenal never do nothing with Granite Jacker in the team. Well, Bayer Leverkusen have done too bad with him the team, have they? <laughs> do you know what I mean? So obviously, Granite Jacker was never the problem, was he? I don't think. But anyway, um, I, I always, I've always liked Granite Jacker. Anyway, I was supporting him when you know that game against Crystal Palace when he did what he did and everyone wanted him out of the club. I, I felt in the circumstances, what he did was not acceptable, but it, there was reasons behind it, which you know he's talked about, and I felt as though he needed more support, maybe. But anyway, um. Terry says, yeah, come on, Richard, we're going to be first losers two seasons. Right? Well, we might not even be first losers this season because Liverpool aren't that, you know, we're, we're only level on points with Liverpool, aren't we? So who knows? Um, Terry says, Neil, I love your positivity. Can you please tell me Santa Claus will come down my chimney? Well, he, if he can fit down your chimney. He if might, he, he can fit, well, exactly. <laughs> Yeah, if you can fit, yeah, I don't know. We'll have to see. Um, Warren says it's over, folks. I kind of agree with you, mate. I'm not going to disagree with that at all. Um, shambolic second half, no fight, indeed. Yep, yeah, absolutely right. Again, and again, Warren's come up with another good comment. Is any in the bin, please? Exactly. I would have put him in the bin last year, quite honestly. I would have put him in the Ramsdale bin. That's what should have happened when he was kicking Ramsdale out of the team and replacing him with someone who he thought was better. Why Great didn't he do point. the same with Zinni? Why didn't he do the same with Zinni? Spin him off as well. That's what he should have done. But he didn't. He's for some reason he's his Man City mate, and he wants to keep picking him. You know, and it, it and it's just costing us. It's cost us time after time again. Uh, Terry says, I think we need to buy more players now than what we actually needed last season. Yeah, maybe you're right. Yeah, I thought uh, three, maybe four players this season. We need to buy at least eight or nine. We've gone backwards again. Well, we've not necessarily gone backwards. We just haven't moved forward from last season, and that's the point. With the money that we spent in the summer. We should have progressed forward, and we haven't. That's the problem. I agree. I don't know if we need eight or nine players. We certainly need four or five, and we need to get rid of about eight or nine in the squad that aren't good enough. Quite obviously, a lot of dead wood. We need to get rid of. Yes, they're not even dead wood, though, Neil. They just not don't wood, play. Yeah, not, yeah, don't play. Yeah, sorry, he's not picking them, is he? For whatever reason, he's, there are some. Do El Nenny. I mean, what, what is he still doing at the club? Well, Cedric's still with us, isn't he? Cedric, yeah, exactly. What's he still doing with us? You know what I mean? And, and right. why, why is he? Why is he putting players like Fabio Vieira on the bench week after week and never bringing oh, them on? Crazy. What is the point? You know, he know. sent the Congo out on loan. Suddenly, the Congo, who looked absolutely terrible in our team, suddenly he's gone. He's gone on loan and looks decent. Well, right? Yeah, and this is what people are saying. There's been some stuff about Smith Rowe, right? And Smith Rowe didn't have a great time yesterday, did he? No. He, he, he? But he's not played enough football, has he? He's, he's played one game against Luton. He got taken off. He was man of the match in that game. Got taken off and hasn't had a sniff since. And then yesterday, suddenly it's nil nil. Oh, let's throw Emil Smith Rowe on with 15 minutes. It doesn't work so, yeah, that way, like, Rich. Yeah, of course it doesn't work that way. What's going to happen is, I guarantee what happened is, right, Smith Rose looked a shadow of the player that he used to be and that he can be because this manager's knocked all his confidence out of him. He's going to go away in the summer. He'll join somewhere else, Newcastle, wherever it is, and he'll absolutely smash it up. He'll smash it. He'll be banging it. his goals right, left and centre, and everyone will say, why didn't he do that for us? Well, we, there's one reason, one person, as to the why he didn't do it for yeah, us. Yeah, that annoys me about Arteta big time. If you're, you know, I will not sit on the fence of that one. Smith Rowe is bags of talent. Everyone knows it. And yeah. he's just not getting the opportunities he should have. Look, he did play against Newton and he was man of the match, and rightly so. He assisted two goals. <laughs> yeah. He could have scored a few. 
and then he doesn't yeah. even get a chance after that. What's that all about? No. I know it's ridiculous. And then, what's that going to do for his confidence? And I'll never forget Nothing. that game. I think it was. I think it was the um, the game against Brentford. I think it might have been in a, in the um, Carabao Cup when we when we won. We beat him one 0 and he, he started that game, didn't he? It was his first start for like two years or something, if you remember. And um, after the game, he obviously he was the centre of attention for the media, and he gave an interview after the game. And he was virtually in tears because they, they asked him about, um, you know, what, what, what are you having to do in training? And he was sort of talking about, oh, you know, I'm, I'm having to work hard on these different aspects of his game. And he was almost in tears in that interview. And I thought, this manager's killed him. He's absolutely mm. killed him. And now look at him, you know, he's, he's, a, he's a shadow of the player he shadow, was. Yeah. But two or three years ago, him and, him and Saka kept Arteta in their job. Literally, they did. The they did with them. Yeah, they did. Well. They kept him in his job, and now look at the way he's treated him. You know, Saka Saka's given all kinds of. You know, Saka's had poor games. He he he's still picked every single week. Makes mistakes. Still picked every single week. Right. Emil Smith Rowe's done nothing wrong other than have an injury, which wasn't his fault. Um, and he's been fit for ages. He doesn't and, get to and play. Look, and I've always said, and I will still say, I if 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 Emil Smith Rowe had the same chances that Saka had. He would be a better player than Saka now. I saw more talent in Emerson em em Rowe when they were, you know, when they were both literally yeah. keeping a bit yeah, of credibility yeah. for us. We were so bad, you remember? And it was those two mm. youngsters that gave yeah. us a bit of credibility and made us feel a little bit proud to be an Arsenal fan at the time. It was down to them two. And I, at the time, thought, right. as good as Saka is, I think Emerson Rowe will, will become even better. He's just got raw talent. I, and, I, and I thought, you know, I, I, I used to say, say that about Jack Wilshere. I thought Jack Wilshere was full of talent, but it was injuries yeah. that plagued the lad, you know. And I thought, I don't want to see the same thing happen to him with me when he started getting his injuries. But I think he's overcome that. What he, what he hasn't overcome, or unless it's down to him, is the fact he's not getting on the pitch. And he needs yeah, to be on the exactly. pitch. And he yeah, will yeah, go. No, exactly. He will go. I, you know what? In, in some way, as, as heartbreaking as this is for me, I want him to go because yeah, he, he deserves it. He deserves a good career. Yeah. He does. He, no, that's, that's my fault. Now, I, I actually, I want him to leave for his own good. I want him to leave for his own good. As much as, yes, I think he's a great player. That he, he could be, he still could be a great player for us, right? And he's going to be a Joe Willock type thing, isn't he? He's going to go away and he's going to smash it up somewhere else in the Premier League. He's going to make Arteta look stupid. Not that it's difficult to make him look stupid, but he's going to make, he's going to be another example of a player going away from Arsenal and making Arteta look silly. but not being able to, to get anything out of that player. He's, he's killed it. I mean, Eddie and Ketty is another one, right? And I know Eddie and Ketty is not great, but I can see Eddie and Ketty going to another Premier League team, scoring 15, 20 goals in a season, playing every week. You know, I can see him doing that because he's a finisher in the, in the six-yard box. He, 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 he can't play Arteta's style for a number nine because Arteta doesn't want his number nine in the six-yard box. He didn't want a Bamiang in the six-yard box and he's, he's got nearly 100 goals for us. He wanted him to play left wing or left back. Right, and he doesn't want Eddie Nketiah to be in those. He doesn't want his centre forward to be in those positions, does he? For whatever reason, and that's why Eddie Nketiah is, is just he, he's never been able to grow and develop because he's a he's a six. He's one of those players we mentioned before, and Ian Wright type. He's not in the same league as Ian Wright, but he's that type of player where he'll sniff out a ball in the six yard box. And that number of goals he scored by either charging down a goalkeeper or tapping him from five yards when a ball's blown back to him, because that's where he, he does his best work, Eddie and Kelly. He's not a great footballer, but he's a he's a finisher in the box, isn't he? In in that six yard box. But Arteta doesn't want his centre forward to do that role. He wants his centre forward to be like a, a Jay Zeus, or he wants his centre forward to be like a when Havertz plays and not an actual centre forward. And that's not where Eddie's good at. So yeah. that's why Eddie's confidence has gone. And he's never gonna he, he needs to go as well. Both of them need to go somewhere else in the Premier League or wherever it is, abroad, wherever it is. And they'll both I think they'll both do well in their career. Um because I again is that another examples of Arteta not being able to manage players not but he's got a system and he's the, the players that fit the system he will pick even if they're not as good as some of the other players that he's Kieran Tierney is an example isn't it Kieran Tierney the best left back defensive left back we've had we had at the club and he'd rather play Zinchenko there because he can invert into midfield and still give the ball away and still be terrible and still not cover for, for his own position when he needs to but he'd still rather play him there than play Kieran Tierney who's a natural left back who can defend do you know what I mean? He, he doesn't. He doesn't want his left back to defend. He doesn't want his centre forward to be in the in the six yard box. You know, and th this is why we'll never ever succeed. You can't succeed with a manager who's that inflexible. You know, even Pep's realised after a few years of not playing a centre forward. Actually, I need a centre forward now. Yeah, he's, and he's got, got yeah. a centre forward now. Yeah. What's happened? They're going to win two trebles in a row, and the guy scored like nearly ninety goals in two seasons. Do you mm. know what I mean? It's, it's eventually he did the same with um, Lacazette, wasn't he? He did. We want Lacazette go forward. Yeah. He wanted him to sit deep. Uh, and yeah. do a defensive job as well. 
Um, yeah. 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 He, he, he did it with a Bamiang, right? He wanted a Bamiang to, to, to do this job for the team, right? And because everything of Arteta is about the system. And he wanted Arteta, uh, well, he wanted a Bamiang to do this. And of course, our Bamiang wasn't having none of that. Our Bamiang's thinking, I'm a 30 goal a season striker, mate. You know, get me running in behind a defence. Get me on the end of things and I'll score your goals. I'm not. I'm not a great footballer. No, he, he wasn't a great footballer in terms of natural talent. No, he wasn't. It doesn't matter. When you're scoring 30 goals a season, you do what you do what you're good at. And that's why he's not going to buy a player like he won't buy um he won't buy Ollie Watkins. Um he won't buy Ivan Tony. He won't buy players like that because and even if he did, that they the role that they would play in our team, he, he might as well play Eddie and Ketia. Because that's what that's the, he's gonna want them to play a different role to what they're doing at where they are now. And that's why I don't. That's why I think in the whole time he's been there, he's bought technically one striker, which is Gabriel Jesus, who's not really a striker anyway. That's the only striker he's actually bought because he doesn't want a striker, so he's not going to buy a striker, an actual striker. Now he, he, he'll buy it like he bought Havertz as a forward. You know, he's bought Trossard as a forward, not a striker, a forward. He likes his forwards, doesn't he? His wide forwards or his players that are going to drop deep, false nines, all this kind of rubbish, right? That's what he wants to do. He's going to buy a player like that. He's not going to buy a proper centre mm-hmm. forward. As much as we want one as fans, it's what we're crying out for. And it would make a massive difference to the team. If nothing else, it gives so. us a plan B. Exactly, a different plan. Exactly that. Yeah. And Ollie Watkins, by the way, what a player. Oh, he's a great oh, he's brilliant, player, isn't he? Oh, what a great brilliant. player he is. Yeah, brilliant. He is. I'd love to see him at Arsenal, actually. Oh, I so think he'd be brilliant. Yeah. But Arteta would soon knock the goals out. He's got, what, 26 goals this season. He comes to Arsenal next wow. season, he'll get, he'll get 10, 11, 12 if he, mm. if he joins Arsenal. Because yeah. Arteta will knock that out of him. And he, he's, a, he's a worker, Ollie Watkins, as well. He's not just the goal scorer. He is actually a worker. He works hard for the team, doesn't he? He drops deep. He links to play. He can do all of that. But he's still in, in the box and finishes chances off. But he won't get those opportunities at Arsenal because he, he won't be allowed in that box very often. He'll get yeah. told off. Well, don't go in the box, Ollie. No, don't go in there. No, 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 no. That's not, that's not your job. Absolutely not. I'm a centre forward boss. It doesn't matter. I don't want you in there. <laughs> you know, watch watch Kai Havertz play. Stand outside the box. Spend your whole game standing outside the box. That's where you need to be. Um, that's what'll happen. Um, Warren says, I can't see us doing Bayern if I'm honest. I can't either, but a game of football, 90 minutes. Um, you know, I think last week there wasn't much to choose between us. I don't see any reason why we can't go there and win, potentially, but I just feel as though it's what happens after yesterday. That's the thing, isn't it? Recovering from that game. And can we turn that around that quickly? Um, Warren says, Martin Elliott has looked fit for a while. Jesus uh, needs help. And Zinchenko's liability. Yeah, exactly. I would get rid of both of those two. Absolutely. Um, oh, Martin Elliott hasn't, hasn't looked fit for a while. Yet. Yeah, well, no. There's a few of them haven't really, have they? Uh, Terry says, Arsenal don't seem to have ambition. Top four will do. I remember when top four was enough. Yeah, we mentioned that before. Top four was never enough. Um, and suddenly now, it's fine. It's okay. Don't need to win trophies. What's, what, what? We don't need to win trophies, do we? Who wants to win trophies? Man City, let Man City win them all. That's fine. You know, I'll te- you know, Arteta and Pepper are best buddies. He don't mind his mate winning all the trophies. He's quite happy. No problem, is he? That's all. Uh, Warren says, and now an injury to the captain. Yeah, well, I, I don't know what that's all about, actually. He did. He disappeared out of that game very quickly, didn't he? Because he did start really at first half. He was brilliant, Odegaard, and then he, he he was non-existent in the second half. So was it an injury? Was there some other issue? He did get booted in the chest, didn't he? At some point at the start of the second half. I don't know. Yeah, he came was. off. I don't know what the what the situation is, but that ball that he um, that assist for Saka, which Saka should have done so much better with. What a ball yeah, that was! Ball. Oh yeah. my god! Yeah. Wow. No, it was it was incredible. I thought that first half was the best he's played actually, and then he you was know, the only for me. I'll be honest, he was the only one who was really trying. He, out of all the players out from in the players, first half, it in was the him. First yes, half. yes, really. In the really second really half, though, he did. He disappeared completely, didn't he? And that could, I mean, be, injured. Was, he could be injured. Yeah, know. it could be because there was there was a thing just before he got taken off where um, he just literally got pushed off the ball about two or three times in a row, literally just pushed off the ball. And I'm like, what's going on here? And then he took him off straight after that. So obviously there was an injury, I would assume. We'd have to assume that was a reason because he, he was great up until then, absolutely. Um, Greg says, um, I don't think Arteta is strong enough as a manager. No, neither do I. Absolutely not. I agree with you 100%. Uh, Terry says, even if we strengthen this uh, this season, so will City, Liverpool, but everyone else. Of course, everyone does strengthen every year, don't they? That's no excuse for us not to strengthen. Otherwise, we drop behind. We have to strengthen, but we have to strengthen in the right way. We strengthened last summer. Did we strengthen where we needed to strengthen enough? No, we didn't. You know, we needed a left back. Yes, okay, Timber was injured and he may have been the solution. But even so, you then don't, he gets injured. You don't then let your other left back go out on loan when the only other left back you've got is Zinchenko. I mean, come on. That's, you know, that's just ridiculous, isn't it? That's just crazy, really. Um, absolutely crazy. Um, 
Greg says he seems to pick who he likes rather than pick the team for the game. Well, no, it's not so much he picks who he likes. He picks the players that he knows aren't going to give him any grief and are going to stick to the system that he wants them to play. And it is the same. You're right. He doesn't pick a team for the opposition. He doesn't pick tactics for the opposition. He picks the same style. And I was saying yesterday, well, I, I, you know, Unai Emery has gotten the better of Arteta a few times now when he's come up against him. And the same sort of managers tend to be able to do that. And I look at the way Arsenal play and I can't understand why so many other Premier League managers can't figure out what we're going to do and to stop it. It's not difficult. We do that. We play the same way every single game. And I can't understand why, you know, we, we go away to West Ham and win 6-0. Come on, David Moyes. You know what we're going to do. Surely you can't allow your team to get turned over like that against us. We're easy to play against, really, when you look at it. It's, you have to watch one video of Arsenal playing, and that's how we play every single game. Exactly the same. We'll always, Erdegaard will always look for Saka. Saka will look for Ben White on the overlap. Ben White will come back to Saka. Saka will go back to Erdegaard. All you've got to do is shut down the wide areas, get man marks on Erdegaard, and that's it. We're done. We can't, we won't be able to cope. That's all you've got to do. I'm not saying that's easy always to do because Saka's a talented player, can get into some good positions, and he's great. Martin Ely, when he's on his game, can. Martin Erdegaard's a great player, but. There's ways to do it, even if you have to double up at certain times when the ball's in that area. You know where it's going to go. You've got to anticipate. I'm surprised so many managers fall for our trap every single time. I'm like, come on. We can see it. I can see it watching the game. You know what we're going to do. Why are you falling for it? Come on. But those you know. that haven't fallen for it, that's where we've struggled, Rich. There have yeah, been teams not, yeah. that have doubled up in soccer. And Sometimes more and more teams are going to start to figure it out yeah. now, aren't they, yeah. I think. I think Porto, you know, the first game against Porto, they did, didn't they? Well, we didn't get a shot on yeah. target, did we, against Porto? No, because they completely know. suffocated our players. That's what they did. Yeah. And Villa did the same yesterday in the end, didn't they? And I say Emery's done it to us before. It's not like that's the first time he's done it. He's he's done it two or three times against that Arteta since he's left. Um, you know, and I, I you know, and as much as I at the time I I wanted Emery to go when he was our manager that at towards the end, I did because it wasn't working. But the more I look at it now, if he was given the back in Arteta's been given and the time, because I ultimately I wanted Arteta to go that season when we were 15th in the league, which was far worse than when Emery was here. Far worse. And I, so why wasn't Emery given that time that Arteta was given at that point? Why wasn't he given that time to and the investment? Why wasn't he given the players he wanted? And why wasn't he given three or four years to say, look, there you go, we're going to back you? Because he, he's won trophies. He was an experienced, he's an experienced manager. He, he, if, I think if we'd backed him, I think we would have won a big trophy by now. I really do. In that, four yeah, I, 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 I agree. I, I, I think he was untreated, treated very unfairly. He never got the he backing. Was. Never. I feel and it was bad now. Like he, that I wanted it was him like out. He was made to feel like a scapegoat as well for the board. I really believe that. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. But anyway, it is what it is. I, I, I feel bad about wanting him out as much as I did at the time. Now I do. I feel bad because he wasn't. He wasn't given the tools needed to succeed. He was never going to succeed impossible for him to succeed and Arteta has been given everything that he's needed that Emery needed and Arteta still can't succeed and he's got no excuse at least Emery can hold his head up and say you know I did all I could do I wasn't helped by the club at the time and now he's at Aston Villa they're giving him what he needs they're helping him and look okay you could say well you know he, he was in a similar position with us that season when we finished fifth reached the Europa League final he's in a similar position with Villa but um, it, it's a totally different situation because he's been backed at Villa. He's been given what he wants at Villa, you know, and, and this is the start for him there, isn't it? I can see them next season going on from here. If they get Champions League, I can see them progressing and I'm not saying they're going to win the Premier League necessarily, but I think they'll be another regular top four team now battling in for that top four. It's going to be even harder, isn't it? Because you've got Newcastle, who but their money starts stripping in. Aston Villa look as though they're on a roll. If if Big Fat Ange gets his act together at Spurs, they could become a little bit better. You know, he's in his first season, let's not forget. And someone said this the other day, right? And I kind of I kind of agree with a little bit. It's his first season at Tottenham and he's already done better than what Arteta did in his first season at Arsenal. And, people, and Arsenal fans are laughing at Big Ange because they lost four at Newcastle and stuff. Didn't you see us under Arteta the first couple of seasons he was there we were losing games right left and center against everyone do you know what i mean so you know if he's given time and back in at spurs who's to say he can't improve them and get them somewhere i don't know i, I actually think he i actually don't think he's as bad as he looks at, at times for tottenham i actually think he's he's actually quite a good manager and i think he, well, he could do well wasn't it under right. uno that we had a 22 unbeaten run as well we did yeah, 22 game unbeaten run, yeah. Oh, he yeah, lost yeah. the first two or three and we were like oh my god what's going on here 
and all of a sudden yeah. he went on a 22 match on beating Rodderson, was it? I'm sure it was. Played some lovely football. Do you remember that? And it was a game against Fulham. We won 5 1 that Leicester game when Ozil absolutely ran the show. Oh, that's we yeah, when he played football. his best. Yeah, Ozil was unbelievable. Yeah. I don't know why he couldn't do more of that. He was sensational that day. I remember that. Yeah, yeah. he was. Yeah, yeah. he was. I mean, we, oh, well. we had. We had and the football, funny enough, the football Aston Villa played yesterday, especially in that second half, reminded me of that run you just mentioned when Una Enemy was at us, playing some great football away from home. We were just ripping teams to pieces, you know, mm. and, and that's what Villa were like yesterday. That's what they've been like most of this season, actually. Yeah, they're a little bit open sometimes. They can, I mean, yesterday they were solid at the back, but they have been a bit open. They've conceded a lot of goals, but that's it, what it was like at us. And I just, you know, if we'd given him that backing now, I kind of think, what could have been? What could have been? But... It isn't. We have to forget it, and you know we've we've moved on, and we have to. But I don't know. I still look at it and think, I don't know. He's he knows what he's doing, Unai Emery. He knows how to organise a team. His tactics. Are good. Some of that football they played yesterday, playing out from the back under pressure. How good were they? So good at doing it. I mean, when I remember when Unai Emery started doing it, oh, so yes, we didn't have the players that we needed to do it. And every time we had heart attacks and we conceded so many stupid goals and now he's doing it at Villa and they're looking really good doing it. They were brilliant yesterday. That was that was absolutely fantastic how they played. Some of that football they played yesterday, actually. Yes, we were terrible, but they were really good. And I don't think... They deserved it. Can't. They deserved it. There's no good... There's no yeah. answer to say that they didn't deserve it. Were they, we they were totally really outplayed well. as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. Oh, we were absolutely 100% we were, yeah. Um, Terry says, we need owners that want to win things. Exactly, yeah, like we did have when we had... Um, when we had... Uh, our old friend uh, David Dean, of course. Um, Greg says we need coaches who can improve players, not staying at the same level. Yeah, and that is a good point. How many players have, have actually improved under Mikel Arteta? There's not too many, I don't think, in four years, not that have been there for most of that time. You know, look at what's happened to Smith Rowe, for example. He's gone backwards. People say, oh, Saka's improved. Well, Saka's just a generational talent. <laughs> I don't think it'd be impossible for Saka not to improve because of how good he is as a player. But Martin Ellie's not really pushed on in the way that we expected him to. Obviously, we said Smith Rowe hasn't. And there's been loads, haven't there, that haven't really pushed on as as much as we expected them to. You know, Jesus has been really, he had a really good start. He's been really disappointing. You know, he had a really good start, didn't he? For Arsenal. He looked, brilliant, he initially, looked yeah, brilliant initially. Yeah. Brilliant initially. Yeah. Yeah. And it, look no, what's no. happened to him. So, you know, there's a, there's a, um, a theme for me. You know, and even players that were already at the club before, like I say, Aubameyang stopped scoring, Lacazette stopped scoring when the manager turned up. You know, Kieran Tierney was brilliant, suddenly couldn't get a game and struggled then when he did play because of the system changing because he wasn't playing regular and all these kind of things. He's not improved too many people, actually. Um, Terry says, let's be honest, looking at Arteta's face during the game, he didn't have a clue what to do to change things. Masterclass by Unai again. Yeah, no, well, well, yeah, he mentioned that a minute ago. I mean, you're right, when things don't go right, he doesn't know how to change it, Arteta. He's, he does look as though he hasn't got a clue what he's doing. Well, he, he probably doesn't, actually. Uh, Warren says Alonso. Yeah, you mentioned Alonso before. He didn't need. He hasn't needed four and a half years and 700 million, has he? To go unbeaten in 50 games, whatever it is. Um, Sorry, anyway. I'm just laughing at Fraudetta. Terry, come up with Fraudetta. Fraud. Yeah, like, it's a good name, isn't it, Fraudetta? Is, is that like Fraud's like, um, sister? Anyway. Um, Terry says we can thank AFTV for all the fans back in after. Well, I don't know if we can. I don't, I, to be honest, with you, I stopped watching it a long time ago, actually. But um, can't stand. They them. were very not for me. They were very very vocal in the Wenger whole thing. Was they flying bloody helicopters, aeroplanes over the stadium and stuff? Horrible, like that. horrible, horrible. Hated it. Yeah, and anyone that was behind that, and we know we know some of the people involved in AFTV were behind some of that. And as far as I'm concerned, I, they don't deserve a platform. For Arsenal, because you know it's all very well saying you know you you you, you want to manage about this that the other. That's fair enough, but to do stuff like that, that's just ridiculous. You cannot do that. That's just not what you Absolutely. do. Absolutely. And some so, of the stuff that some of them were saying about him, and you know, wishing him dead and all this. And I'm sorry, I'm, yeah. I'm, I've got no time yeah. for people like that. And and Rich also, it's a well known fact that a lot of them aren't weren't even Arsenal fans. They just jumped on the bandwagon because they saw an opportunity yeah. to to make become celebrities. You know, I'm sick. Of, I hate all this new school generation. That you just need to be on reality TV and all of a sudden you're like a celeb interviewing. Next thing you're interviewing politicians on this morning and stuff. It's an absolute joke and a farce no, for the people with yeah. real talent that are out there and the people that have to actually work hard, pass examinations exactly. to get somewhere exactly. to be sidelined by idiots like that. Sorry, I've got no time for them. No, absolutely right. That's one hundred percent agree with you. And it, you know, there's so much kind of box ticking going on in in media and sport now and it's like people like you said people have worked hard for years to deserve an opportunity never get one 
because you've got idiots like that. You know, they get Robbie off AFTV every time they say to talk about Arsenal. Let's get Robbie on. Why? Why not get someone who's actually got something to say? Why not get someone who's got yeah, he's a Luton something Town to say? fan. Go and talk about Luton Town. Go and speak about your club, mate. Yeah, he'll, he'll probably enjoy it. They've had a good season, haven't they? Considering all, all things considered. Uh, Warren says, Yardman's the only real one. I don't know who Yardman is, so I don't have a clue because I don't watch it, so I don't know. Lee, Lee Judges is the only one that I would, I've would i got any time for at all. I, I, I like Lee Judges. and I, I don't think he's, you know, quite as bad as the others on there, to be honest. I don't mind him at all, but yeah, um, I've not watched it for a long time anyway. Um, Neil uh, Terry says, Neil, sit on that fence and and when you fall, I'll catch you. <laughs> you might not want to, mate. I'm too heavy now. I've become so fat and heavy. <laughs> No. Warren says, I'll tell you, he's had enough time. Absolutely, yeah. he's had more than enough time, I think, personally, but that, maybe that's just me. Uh, Greg says, how much money do we have to waste before we realise we've got a manager who can't improve players? Well, I personally wouldn't. We need to buy players, we just said that, but I wouldn't trust him with spending any more money. I would either give him players that the club decide or someone decides, not him, or uh, get someone else in to spend the money bit more wisely. Uh, Terry says, um, ML Swiss role needs uh, Unai or an Eddie Howe. Well, yeah, it was Unai that gave him his chance, wasn't it? Um, Emil Smith role. Or was it Wenger even, maybe? I can't... No, I think it was Unai, wasn't it? it? gave him his debut. He gave Saka his debut as well, didn't he? Um, so there you go. Uh, Greg says, Terry Neal was a bad manager, but he can be forgiven because he gave us one of our greatest players. Well, yeah, I mean, I actually... Didn't mind Terry Neal. He was the first manager at the club when I was first started um, supporting. Terry says the same, yeah. But he was my first manager as well. I think it was yours as well, wasn't he, Neil? Terry, Terry Neal. So I think we've all got a little bit of a soft spot for him. He wasn't a great manager. No, of course not. He, he won one FA Cup. But uh, in fact, he's quite similar to Arteta, isn't he? Um, he finished like seven, four, eight for a couple of times, won an FA Cup in his early time, and then didn't really win a lot after, but didn't win anything after that at all. And eventually, after having a team that looked as though they should win the league, when we had Brady and Stapleton and Alan Sunderland and all them great players, and we didn't end up doing it, um, and then he, we kind of lost his way and ended up getting... Set. I, he reminds me very much of a oh, young manager as well, although he'd had, he'd had at least Terry had managed somewhere else before. Um, they, they kind of got some similarities there, actually, and I can it's see it going actually. a similar way. It's a good point. Yeah. And I can remember the game against um, Walsall when we lost in the League Cup in 1983. And everyone was outside the main entrance saying, Neil out, Neil out. I remember that, right? Mm. And um, I was there doing it as well because I had enough of him by then. Um, <laughs> but, you know, that's what it needs to happen now. We need we need the fans outside the Emirates to start doing stuff like that. That's what we need. Do the fans together to unite. It's the only way Arteta is going to go. He's not going to go, well, everyone's just, oh, poor little Mikel Arteta. Let's give him another two, five years because he's got nice hair. Well, his hair's going to fall out one day and go, great. <laughs> what are you going to do then? What are you going to do then? I don't know, honestly. Um, so Greg says, I go back to the Bertie Me times. Well, wow, dear, good stuff. Good stuff. Um, there you go. Terry says, uh, well said, Neil, about AFC. But yeah, I mean, we all kind of echo those um, echo those thoughts, don't we, about AFC? Um, but yeah, I mean, um, what's going to happen now? I don't know. I mean, obviously, Wednesday now is an important game, a massive game. It's all about, for me, how we respond to what happened on Sunday. Can you see him making... Too many changes to the team. Do you think Zinchenko will play? Oh, Do you think hope so. play? I mean, hope he makes changes, Rich. <laughs> what changes would you make, though? Well, I don't want to play Zinchenko for a start. <laughs> well, no, nobody would, apart from Arteta. I want Havertz back in the nine, if he's going to play him. Um, yeah. Maybe, as just as you said, start on the left, or Trossard, even. Saka's going to obviously play on the right. And then uh, go back to how it was. We had, uh, what did we have? We had uh, a midfield of Odegaard, Rice, and Jorginho, didn't we? And then just have maybe Kiwi or Tomiyasu. I don't know what's happened with Ben White. If Ben White's injured, then they might have to tinker at the back. But if Ben White is fit, then it's got to be Kiwi or Tomiyasu on the on the left. Surely. Do not play Zinchenko. It'll, if we've got any chance, that will be eradicated within play. That's for sure. Um, yeah. And yeah, you did say, all right, to be fair, you, you did have a good second half, I think it was, um, against it was Bayern, wasn't it? It was actually against yeah. Bayern. So, yeah. all right, maybe I'm being a little bit unfair to the lad, but I'm sorry, no, the back of that performance against Villa, no, no chance. So go back to what was working. That's all I'm going to say. Go back to what was working. When we had a bit of a good run in this calendar year, to be fair, mm. we haven't played bad football, all right, you know, and, and we defended quite solidly as well. We had the best defensive record and offensive record, didn't we, up until yesterday. So 
go back to that. That's what I would do. Um, and yeah, I, 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 yeah, I agree. Yeah, go back to what was working. Exactly. That's it. Why well, change it anyway? But I know. But yeah, ridiculous. I mean, at, the, at this point in the season, I mean, I, I've been saying he needed to rotate the squad more earlier in the season. He was playing the same eleven virtually every week, and you can't do that. And he needed to rotate more to give players more minutes on the pitch. But now with six league games to play and potentially maybe one one more Champions League game or maybe three, now's the time to think. Well, let's just play the team that's working. We've only got six games to play. There's no point messing around with it now because we need to get the wins, don't we? So now's the time to not make the changes. Now's the time to stick with, like you said, what we were doing and hope that no one gets injured, none of those key players get injured and we can get through the season. But there's only a few games left now that we have to win. Like you said, if we can take it... I I think, Rich, you only rotate if we're we're absolutely smashing a team. We've got four or five goals in the first 60 or 70 minutes. Then bring on loads of subs and give those players a rest. You're all yeah. right now. Now it's too late with six, seven games left, potentially seven. If we get knocked out, just play your best team, just play the best team, the best, strongest team. And mm. you know, if there is a certain risk, if that goes, if, if it goes there, uh, or if it goes with, with, with a certain risk of you know, overplaying a player maybe and then getting injured, well, we'll deal with that in the next game after. But at the moment, as it stands, yeah. if a player is fit, I'm sorry, they have to be there as far as I'm concerned. Um, yeah, I, I think so, yeah. we, there's yeah, no yeah. we've got no margin now left we might have had a smaller one uh, before yesterday but now we've got no margin of error everything has to be perfect and even then we might end up with nothing so we can't yeah. make any errors at all none and no, that's what I see no. and that's a prediction yeah. if I was going to say I can't even think I mean it's going to be such a tight game for me but yeah, I'll, yeah. I'll be positive and I'll go 2-1 I'll just say we'll win 2-1 I wouldn't be surprised if we have extra time on penalties, actually. Maybe, you're right, yeah, yeah. I and mean, we know what will happen with penalties away in Germany. It's not going to oh, end don't. well, is it, probably? Don't. Um, but I wouldn't be surprised because I, I don't. I, I think last week there were spells in the game that we were we were better than them. There were spells when they were better than us. It was quite an even game. A draw was probably the fair result last week. So uh, it, a draw could be a good, a decent, like, fair result tomorrow, potentially. Maybe. We'll have yeah. to play pretty well to win. My, 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 my worry is... The response to yesterday's performance exactly in yesterday's that. game, that's what worries me. If Erdegaard is out, if Ben White is out, mm. they're two key players for us. There's no doubt about that. If they're both missing, going away. Yes, I know they've got Ganabri out because he's got a hamstring yep. injury that he picked up against us. They're saying that um, Coleman might be out as well. Mm. Kingsley Coleman, he's a decent replacement. So that's, you know, they've got their own injury problems as well. But I don't know. It would worry no, me more. Us without key players and more it's more of a blow to us than other teams because we can't cope. We don't have the players to come. We're too play finely tuned. Play. Rich, you're right. We're too finely tuned. We lose one or two of those players, it lose we, we lose the whole balance of the team because we're so yeah, we finely do. tuned for with the success to work, we have to have all of those players and working well. If we lose yeah. one or two, that's it. It's like the string on the guitar is broken and you can't play the tune properly. That's it. End of. Um, and, yeah. and you say that about players out for Bayern. Well, Villa had players out. And look what they did to us. They yeah, had players out. True. So Their best I, player I, was out. Their best yeah, player was out. Exactly. So, I'm sorry. At the end of the day, I don't think it comes to... I, I, I think you're right. I think if, if Odegaard and White are gone, we will be, it'll be a miracle for us to get anything then. Because they have been... I think White has been very good this, this calendar year. Odegaard is just superb every time he plays, to be fair. He tries his blooming heart out. He does. And if they're both out, then we're going to be struggling. So, yeah, it depends on who's fit. But if everyone is fit, go back to what we was working as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, and if we do that, we'll have a we'll have a chance to go through definitely. But yeah, it's going to be tough. Away at Bayern Munich is going to be tough, and you know it's not often yeah. away from home. We've gone and won these type of games, is it? We just yeah. don't often do it, and we're going to have to find a way. But you know, extra time penalties it might be. But let's see. Um, Terry's optimistic. He's gone four one Bayern. He says, Neffin and Blind at the TV, calling out. I'd say, yeah, well, no, yeah, I, I would expect you probably will be. Um, but I, I don't think we'll lose by that many goals. I think it'll be a really tight game, even despite us going into it in the problems that we had on Sunday. It's going to be a tight game and it's going to be small margins again, isn't it? Can we do it? Um, Greg says that we needed to win at home. Well, we'll see. If we win away, then we didn't need to win at home, did we? It was fine. But if obviously, if, if we don't go through... It will be because we didn't win at home. Absolutely, it will. Yeah, because you've got to really win your home games over there to, to progress in Europe. Um, but even even if we win tomorrow, uh, Wednesday, I'll be over the moon. Obviously, delighted. Another what? I only had third Champions League semi final ever. 
So that would be a big, a big thing. But unless we actually go on to the final and win it, to me, it's like it's like coming second in the league, isn't it? Losing in a semi-final is like coming second in the league. No one remembers who came, who lost the semi-final. No one remembers who came second. You know, it's all about winning, isn't it? When you get that far, it's about winning. And now people said, you know, you said it yourself, Neil, you know, it's not like, it's not about being a glory hunter. That's not what it is at all. What it's about is if you get so close and you're so far to get into, you know, close to a final or close to winning a league title, you then have to win it. Otherwise, it's a failure. And it's no good saying, oh, well, it's all, you know, only one team can win a trophy. Yeah, well, one team can win it. But when you put yourself in a position where you can win it, if you then don't win it, <laughs> that is a failure, isn't it? And that's not good enough if we keep doing that. You know, it's and like, losing in a, it's yeah. like with anything in life, Rich. You, you do, you go, yeah. I've seen on your social media, you do a lot of running and stuff now. If you were, if you were winning a race by so many yards and then just complacency and then you end up just missing out by 100 for a second, you're going to be kicking yourself. It's not that, oh, I'm a glory hunter and I wanted to win it, but I had an opportunity to win it. It was in my hands and I messed up. And you'll be gutted, won't you? You'll be. It's like yeah. we all we all play our own little games or sports, whether it's board games or physical games or whatever. We don't play just to, oh, we'll just play for the sake of it and we want to be in it. We're playing it to win it, for goodness sake. That doesn't mean you're a trophy hunter or a glory hunter. You want to no. win. You and you and, it, and you know the the jubilation and the elation that you feel, even if you whether you're with loads of fans or even if you're sat at home with your family or you're even by yourself. The jubilation that you feel when when we lift the FA Cup or we win a trophy, it's just it's second to none. I'm sorry, but that that it, it's it's just a sense of euphoria. You have got the endorphins flowing all over the place, and it's a good feel. And who doesn't want that in their life? But this is the whole point, isn't it? This is this is why you you follow football, right? This is why we follow football. It is for those moments. Now we've been lucky over the years because we've experienced lots of great moments for supporting Arsenal, right? Winning league titles and FA Cups and what have you, right? We've experienced some great, great moments, and that's what it's about. It's you're right. It's that euphoria, and that's what it's all about. And if you don't want to experience that, what are you doing following football? If you're just in there just to have a good time and have a drink with your mates, well, fair enough. Don't have a drink with your mates on a Friday night. You don't need to attach yourself to football. Football's all about trying to experience that. What, even if it's just one moment, that one moment that lives with you forever, and it might it might be one moment out of a million. Doesn't matter. That one moment lives with you forever. Anfield eighty nine will live with us forever, right? And even not even just that. A couple of weeks ago, I watched the Arsenal women win a cup final against Chelsea, right? And although it's just just the, the League Cup, which is the, you know the equivalent of the League Cup for the men, it's not the biggest trophy to win. When you're there seeing your your team win a trophy, nothing beats that. That to me was the same as seeing Arsenal win the league. You feel that same euphoria at the time. It's exactly the same, and that's what you want to feel. I want to feel that. I want every, end of every season. I want to feel that again every single season. That's what I want. To, that's what it's, that's what we're here for. If you're not here for that reason, go and do something else on a Saturday or a Sunday. Go and follow a different sport. Go and go fishing or do something else. You know, it's football's not for you. If you're happy just coming second, oh well, we competed. We were top of the league after 31 games. If that's all you want then you're not, football is not for you. Competitive sport is not for you. Go and do something else. It's all about winning and that's it. And when you feel that, and you're not going to win every season, you're not going to win every trophy and it doesn't matter. You don't need to win them all. But when you're close, you need to win it. At some point, you've got to win it because you want to feel that. You like, you know, you, you can't, no matter how many Man City fans, you know, they, they might be, you know, you might feel, oh, they're a bit complacent. They're winning, 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 winning. But you never get enough. Seeing your team win a trophy, you don't you get, enough. get enough. No way, no way. Impossible. Look at, look, Impossible. look at look at tennis. Look at Djokovic. He's broken all the records. He's got twenty four slams or twenty five. I think it's twenty four at the moment. Is he said right? That's enough, and I'll be happy to come like you know as runner up, or I'll come as I'm, he still wants another five or six. He's got. Yeah. He's, he's won more than anyone else has had in the in history of the game. He's he's not drying up, is he? He wants more. So that's it. Absolutely. You, you, that's you just want to. You you want if you feel a good emotion in any walk of life of anything you do, you don't want to think, oh, I've had it once, that's enough. You want to feel it again yeah. because you're a human you being. Know. You want to feel it again and again Absolutely. and again. Why not? And what? Then some that's people say, well, you're a glory hunter. Well, no, I'm not. So if anything, if anything, you're an endorphin hunter. Exactly. Exactly. Thank you. And that's what we all are. Let's face it. You know, you've got some some people will take drugs or they'll drink alcohol or they'll go to the bookies because they want to feel that little high Rush. for a few moments in time. We, I get my high from other things in life and football is one of them. 
and yeah. Arsenal is one of them. And if Arsenal can provide that for me, which they do very occasionally, but they do, you want to feel that again. You want Absolutely. to see that again. And I've never, ever got over Anfield 89 and that feeling, yeah. right? And yeah. it's like, ever since then, all I've wanted maybe to do is to experience something like that again. And we've got close to it. There's been moments that's been maybe better in some ways. You know, the Invincible season, for example, you know, as, as an overall thing, is better than a yeah. one-off game. It's That was a whole season of it. Do you know what I mean? And we've experienced so many great things, but it's that, those moments, aren't they? You just... As a, as a fan, seeing your club win anything, I don't care if it's the Carabao Cup. If we win the Carabao Cup for the next four seasons in a row, right, I'll be, OK, it's not enough, but I'll be pretty happy to see mm. our team win a trophy, lift, get our captain going up at Wembley and lifting up. And a lifting it, yeah. yeah. And getting us fireworks going up on the pitch and that kind of stuff. Yeah, it's it's, no, it's, it's that. Nothing your beats. team. It's, it's your etched team. It's into your heart trophy. forever. It's etched in, those moments yeah. are etched into your heart forever. And that's, I think, that's the whole point of it. So, listen, on that note, I'm going to have to quickly leave you. I'm, I really need to go. So, I'm so sorry yeah, to leave you like this. But um, no, no, thanks for having me on. Thanks for having me on. And thanks to everyone in the chat. Terry always making me laugh. Um, thanks to everyone. <laughs> Hope you have, have a good one. And look, you never know. We might pull off a miracle on Wednesday. You never know. So, let's keep the faith, all right? But Keep the faith. Thanks indeed. for having me on. We I'll will. see you soon, Rich. All the best to yeah, everyone. Cheers, mate. Take it easy. Bye. Take it easy, my friend. Thanks, bye. Good to see you. Oh, that's Neil there. Good to see him back on the channel, isn't it? Fantastic. Uh, Greg says, I'm a glory hunter, but unfortunately, I support Arsenal. We've had our fair share of glory, my friend, haven't we? Come on, let's be honest. We have had our fair share of glory over the years. I wouldn't I wouldn't change it for anything else. Some of the things that I've experienced, some of the moments that we've seen, um, I wouldn't I wouldn't change it for anything. Uh, I wouldn't. So, you know, um, you know, I look at um you look at Man City every year, like winning a treble and this, that and the other, right? And you think, oh my God, wouldn't that be great? Yeah, it'd be great if it was my team. But we've experienced so many great moments, haven't we, that I can't really complain that we're not now winning trebles. Um, I want to see us win some more trophies, though, obviously, as I think we all do. Terry says, uh, winning something, anything is the best buzz in the world. It is, yeah. You know, as I say, you know, there's, there's not a drug or anything that you can get that gives you that same feeling, you know, and... I don't know. I, I can't understand why people are happy watching your team play every week, especially people. I mean, I don't go to many games anymore for one reason or another. Um, and there's some people that go to every game. They spend lots and lots of money, thousands and thousands of pounds a season. Surely you want to experience some sort of euphoria at the end of it all. Surely you do. Uh, I don't know. I, I know I, when I used to go every game, when I had a season ticket and I used to go all the away games, um, you, you, you're doing it because you're chasing that buzz, aren't you, at the end of it all? You're chasing that buzz where you see your team win because you've experienced it you want to experience it again you know and there's that it, i always go back to that james song sit down there's that line isn't there where it says if i hadn't seen such riches i could live with being poor and that's kind of what it is once you've seen your team win a trophy that feeling you want to experience it again and again and again and again you do and if you're a player it's the same isn't it you know if, if you play sport or you do anything like that and you achieve something big you want to achieve it again you want to achieve something else again don't you and that's what it is if you've never achieved anything in your life and you've never seen your team achieve anything I guess you feel a bit differently about it maybe but we're Arsenal fans most of us have experienced some great things haven't we and I feel a bit sorry maybe some of the younger Arsenal fans that haven't maybe they're the ones that seem to be quite happy I don't know but um, as soon as as soon as we win something as soon as we win something they'll change and they'll be demanding trophies again like we all do and that's the reason why. That is the reason why. Um, Terry says, I shaved my head for about 40 odd years and still got a buzz winning the hair dryer. <laughs> oh, no, I need a hair dryer as well, don't I? Um, anyway, let me just uh, stand in the sun for five minutes. That's it. Uh, Greg, so I remember when we done the double in early 70s, we thought no one would ever beat us again. Well, yeah, we have that a few times. Obviously, every time we've won the league, I think we're going to win the league for the next five years. And then we never have done. We haven't even retained it, we said before, since the 1930s. Um, so there you go. But but no, you're right. It's, it's, that, it's that buzz that you get, isn't it? And to me, when you've spent a season following your team, watching the games and this, that and the other, you want to have something at the end of it to be excited about, don't you? You know, you see other, other teams winning stuff. You see other teams celebrating. And there's always a little bit of, like, uh, a little bit of jealous, isn't there? Thinking, I want that for my team. You know, I know what it's like. It's great. I say I watched the women win that cup the other week and it was fantastic. That feeling never, ever changes. And I felt the same at the end of that game as I did the first time I ever saw Arsenal win anything, which was the League Cup as well in 1987. The, the, the joy is the same. You can't, there's no difference. It doesn't matter if you've won the Champions League or you win the League Cup. The, the joy of winning a trophy, seeing your 
team win a cup final or win a league title. Nothing can beat that. Nothing. That's why we're all here. Surely it's got to be, hasn't it? And if you're if you're satisfied and you're happy that we're finishing second and we're putting ourselves in positions to win trophies and not winning them, if you're happy about that, to me, I don't know. I, I, as I said, I don't think football's for you. Honestly, I don't. I think you should go and do knitting or something else that's non-competitive, that winning and losing doesn't matter. This is sport. Whatever sport it is, it's about winning. Coming second is coming nowhere. That's, that's it. I'm sorry. That's the way it is. Um, obviously, if if you've got the choice of coming fourth or coming second, coming second's better. But if you've got the option to come first and you come second, no, nah, it's not good enough. It's not enough. And certainly not for this great football club, you know, and some of the younger fans maybe need to understand the history of us, understand the history of this club, where, where we, what we've achieved in our history and what we should be aiming to achieve every single year. We should always be aiming for the stars. You're not always going to get them. Um, sometimes you might not, but, you know, you've got to try, haven't you? You've got to try. Uh, Greg says, going to Wembley and Arsenal winning is the best rush you can ever get. Exactly, yeah, absolutely. 100% it is, exactly. And that's what it is, isn't it? It's not about being a glory hunter. And it's not about that, is it? It's about that euphoria that you feel. It's that, it is the endorphins that we mentioned before. Uh, Terry says, um, woke ruins everything, even sport. Absolutely, it does, yeah, 100%. No doubt about that. Absolutely no doubt about that. All these political messages, they're still taking the knee. The player took the knee at the weekend. What on earth are you doing? What on earth are you doing? Come on. I want to see somebody turn around and say, no, put a stop to this nonsense. It's, it's like watching football these days, like watching a party political, um, not even a party political broadcast. It's almost like a political messages all the time, isn't there? It's like trying to brainwash. But it's like Big Brother. It's like George Orwell with Big Brother. That's what it is. Sports become that now. I don't want political messages when I watch football. I don't want to see political messages when I'm doing stuff that's entertainment. That you know, I, I don't want that. I just want to go to football and enjoy football for football and for sport. I don't want to see your political nonsense because not everyone's going to agree with it, are they? Not everyone has to agree with it either because that's the whole point of politics. That's the whole point of this kind of stuff. There's always two, three, four different sides to it all. So why pushing? Why are they pushing one side of everything? You know, why are they why are they pushing this nonsense on us all the time at football? It's nothing to do with it. Nothing to do with it. Stop alienating people. It's one of the reasons why I don't go anymore as well. That's another reason. But all that nonsense, I just can't be doing with it. Um, but anyway, um, Let's see what the rest of the season holds. But anyway, uh, we got a bit sidetracked there, of course, but that's what happens sometimes when, you know, we talk about certain other things. But ultimately, um, it's been a frustrating week, really, hasn't it? Because the Bayern Munich game at home wasn't what we wanted. Um, the game yesterday certainly wasn't what we wanted. Um, and it looks as though the season is about to fall apart, which has happened so many times in the last 20 years, hasn't it? At this kind of point in the season, you know, sometimes it was February, sometimes it was March, sometimes it's been April, but it's always the same, isn't it? It's like a, it's like we're on a never ending loop of misery, aren't we? <laughs> and I just wish it would finish. And I think there's only one way this particular loop's going to finish. And that'll be, as we said before, when we've changed manager. Um, Colonel, we say there, my friend, he says, yesterday was awful. Honestly, I uh, think it would be better if Emery was in charge. Well, we said that earlier, I don't know if you saw earlier in the show, we were talking about um, Unai Emery and had he been given the backing and the time and I feel bad about the way I felt about him at the time he was at Arsenal. Um, Greg says, when the women play, the other team like taking the knee because it's the only way they get their knees dirty. Yeah, maybe that's true, yeah. See, that's the, that's the only thing about women's football that I would say they... It's, it's become even more political than the men's game, really, hasn't it, in a lot of ways. And I try to blank that out if I can when I'm at the games and stuff because I don't want it to spoil my enjoyment, which it has done in the men's game, absolutely. And I'm trying not to let it in the women's game because there's so much about the women's game to love. Um, but, yeah, it's difficult sometimes when you see these political messages being rammed down your throat. It's like, no, if you're going to, if you're going to, if you're going to put politics into sport, then make it fair, put all sides of the, the political agendas out and let everybody know what's happening. Otherwise, it's just become big brother, doesn't it? You are doing what we tell you. And, you know, a lot of young, impressionable people watch football, are influenced by it, and they see all this kind of stuff. That's why they do it, because it's influencing these young people, isn't it? Where What they should be doing is, you know, it's like the, the school education system is just state, agenda, uh, state propaganda, isn't it? It's not education. Um, and I don't know, they, it should be fair. You should give every side of it, give everyone the option to make their own mind up. You know, that's what they should be doing rather than taking sides. And that's what football and sport are doing, and it's wrong. Um, 
you know they shouldn't bring any you know we've all got our own views on on life and on stuff like that um but we don't take them to football we shouldn't ever take them to football you know it happened in the past didn't it when you had the um you know you had all that racism in the 70s and 80s when you had um the um nf and all that kind of stuff at football pushing their political agenda that was wrong and that's wrong and the other end of the side now that's also wrong as well taking the knee is also wrong forcing it on football is also wrong in the same way so it's all wrong don't do it don't do it leave leave that away leave that at home we've got plenty of time we can debate all that kind of stuff and we can get all sides across don't force it on young impressionable people and make them think that's the only way because it isn't the only way there's other ways let them decide for themselves let them discover for themselves let them learn educate people that's what it's about isn't it um Kyle says our fullbacks are slow out of position most of the time leaves midfield exposed to counter um so we seriously struggle uh from teams that have pace against us prime Henri would love playing against us now so we, we said this earlier again that, um i think we're quite easy to play against i'm surprised so many teams in the premier league fall into our trap and we end up winning four or five nil against teams because it's obvious what we're going to do and you're right yeah teams that set their set themselves up in the right way are always going to have success against us um obviously most teams in the premier league aren't quite good enough they don't have the players that are good enough they maybe don't have a coach that's good enough but when we do come up against them as we did on sunday that's how you do it it's not difficult is it and thomas tuchel on wednesday night he's going to know what to do to get a result against us we are going to have to change things up a little bit we're going to have to be a little bit more unpredictable and we're going to have to play above ourselves i think to win that game but anyway um let's see uh greg says if you're happy about your team losing you're supporting the wrong team winning is exactly it's not even yeah i it's, it's, it's that's what sport is isn't it and it's not just football i think that's all sport um you know I, I, I don't know. I mean, I grew up playing sport from quite a young age competitively and I think it's in me. I've got that competitiveness. I don't like losing anything. You know, I don't like losing a race to the traffic lights. You know what I mean? I don't like losing anything. So it's just in me. And it, when it comes to football, I don't want to see my team lose. And if my team aren't going to win, then what else is there? Do you know what I mean? And it's like, that, that's why sometimes maybe I've been a little bit too... Um, uh, I don't know, harsh or Mikel Arteta at times, but I want to. I want the best for my team. I want to see my team winning stuff. Coming second is not enough. It's not good enough. It never will be. It never has been. It never will be. So you know that's the way it is. And you're right. If you don't want your team to win, you don't want your team to finish top. You're happy not finishing top, not winning things. To me, you're in the wrong. You're in the wrong place. Uh, Terry says, "Great show tonight, Richard. Uh, you was defo on fire, and great to have Neil back. What a lovely bloke. Looking forward to Wednesday, sort of." <laughs> Yeah, um, still just like Arsenal onwards and backwards. Well, yeah, you know, we, we'll enjoy Wednesday, won't we? Um, I'll be back on Wednesday, of course, for the game um, at quarter to eight. Uh, the Bayern Munich game, of course, we'll be here for that one. Friday, we've got the women's return of the Arsenal women's show. Andreas will be back. His vlog's on the channel. So watch out for that from yesterday's game against Bristol City. We still cheered us up, didn't it, after the men's disappointment. We enjoy watching the women win 5-0. Andreas's vlog is on the channel, so check that out. We'll be back Friday for that one at half past seven. Of course, Saturday, Saturday night. Late kickoff, isn't it? Half past seven kickoff against Wolves in the Premier League. And then, of course, Sunday from the Emirates, two o'clock kickoff, Arsenal women against Leicester. So it's a busy week. Lots going on, lots of games. It's going to be good, isn't it? So join us all for that. Terry says it would be nothing better than our set of proving wrong. Exactly. This is the whole point, isn't it? Right. And this, the, the, the thing is, though, Terry, right? and I've had this conversation on social media with lots and lots of people, right? If our set proves me wrong and we win trophies and we win league titles and this, that, and the other, right? I will be the happiest person in the world. And I'll put my hands up. I will apologize. I'm sorry, Michael Arteta, I was wrong. All this, that, and the other, right? But if we don't, and if Arteta gets sacked and we never do anything, all those that backed Arteta are not going to put their hands up and say, oh, I'm sorry for um, for not, you know, for not seeing it from the, from your point of view. You're not going to get it, are you? We'll have to apologize. And that's fine. I've got no problem. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong. I hope I'm wrong. But they're never going to accept that they were wrong. They're always going to say, oh, we were right to support him. That's what's going to happen. I'll tell you exactly, they will. So, you know, we need to accept that. That's the way things are. Um, anyway, um, Colonel says there, most fans hated Arsenal between 2013 and 2018. Um, he had mediocre backing and won three FA Cups, three community shields and was in a title race. Never understand why he was sacked without proper fun. No, yeah, exactly. That's another point we made earlier. It's almost like you, you've not watched the show, but you've gone through most of the points that we've already raised tonight. You're right, absolutely. Um, Bengal, 
was what Wenger did wasn't acceptable to the fans anymore when we were top four of the year, winning FA Cups. Like you said, we was in title races until February, March, really, virtually every season. It wasn't good enough. And yet now suddenly it is good enough. The same the same thing is now good enough. And it wasn't good enough before. Makes no sense. Um, Greg says, thanks, Rich. Enjoy your holiday. Don't forget to uh, get the list off your wife. No, I've already got that. I've already done them today. I've washed the car. I've cut the grass. Um, I've been busy today. But the rest of the week, I'm going to hopefully do a bit more fun things. Uh, that's the plan anyway, to do some more. But I've, I've, done, I've caught up on some of the jobs today. That's been, you know, when it's like when you're at work, you work full time and you don't get time wise here to do the all the jobs that need doing and things get behind and you think oh god i need to find some time to do this set but luckily today i've uh i've managed to get a few things done so i'm ahead of myself for this week so i've got a little bit in the bank now so i can hopefully have some enjoy myself for the uh rest of the week hopefully um while while i still can find back to work next week so yeah uh, you have to do what you do don't you of course one of the things that we'll be doing this week of course is watching the game on wednesday night um the Bayern munich game so join me for that quarter to eight it's going to be good uh, it's going to be tense it's going to be well we don't know do we what's going to happen anything could happen let's see what the team lineup is first will zinchenko still be in the team god please not please not it's, it gives me nightmares that guy um anyway let's see what happens wednesday is a different game it's a new start it's I was going to say it's nil-nil. It'll actually be 2-2, two, two, but it will be nil-nil. And we start again. And um, if we play at our best, we can certainly win. But will we recover enough from Sunday? We'll have to see. But join me quarter to eight on Wednesday. Look forward to your company then. Thanks for joining me tonight. Don't forget to give us a like. Do subscribe if you are new. And definitely join us Wednesday because it's going to be, it could be a long night, couldn't it? It's going to be tense. It's going to be exciting anyway, that's for sure. Um, so thanks for watching tonight. Lovely to see Neil again as well. So thanks, Neil, for coming on. Um, we'll have to. I keep saying we're going to do these these shows more regular, and then it's like everything else, isn't it? It's like cutting the grass. It's getting the time, isn't it? Finding the time to do it. Of course, this week I have a little bit more time because I'm off work, so I managed to squeeze one in. Um, Colonel says that if uh, Sane and Gnabry are injured, we stand the top. I think Gnabry is definitely out. I'm not sure about Sane. Um, Terry says, Richard, have a great week off. Uh, Greg, take care. See you Wednesday. And don't forget to hit the likes before you go. DJ, come on, you guys. Exactly. Yeah. Hit the likes before you go, guys. And we'll see you Wednesday. Thanks, Roger. Thanks to Neil. Great to see him again. I say we'll start doing some more of these shows again. I just need to find the time. I'm just so busy at the minute. But we'll we'll get it we'll get it sorted. There's too many games as well. It doesn't help, does it, when there's a game on as well. And then it's that takes up one night or two nights a week. And it's like, have I got another night to give up for another show? It's like... Not at the moment, but we'll, we'll get there. Maybe next season we'll do a few different things as well. But thanks for watching. I'll see you Wednesday night. Come on, you gunners. Let's bounce back. That's what it's about. As Arteta said, I agree with him. It's not about the game that you've just lost. It's how you respond and then you bounce back. And that's what we've got to do Wednesday. So let's see. See you soon, guys. Thanks for watching. Take it easy. Mm -hmm.